Hello, everybody. I am Brother Luke. Welcome to this fun fellowship Friday night for the Church of the Eternally Secure, also known as CES. Uh, welcome back, congregation, and hello to everybody on the panel. Uh, I'm raring to go. Why don't we say hello to the congregation, and why don't we start with Sister Lisa? Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. It is a pleasure to be here again on CES Friday. I'd like to say good evening to everyone on the panel and good evening to everyone out there in the chat. God bless you all. Amen. And sister, before we move on, uh, I hope you're feeling better. I'm glad you're here. Are you feeling any better? Yes, I am feeling better, which is why I was able to be here with you tonight. So all I right. praise God for that. Thank you very much. All right, we're happy to hear that. I'm sure a lot of people have been praying for you. Uh, all right, Brother Ben, will you say hi to everybody? Hello, everyone. It's good to be here. Sorry, I have food in my mouth or an ice cube in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, technically, I'm not sure we can call ice cubes food. But They're keto. <laughs> definitely <laughs> keto. They're definitely low-calorie foods. Low-carb. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, let's. Well, since you since you've already got the floor here, uh, Sister Jan, why don't you say hi to everybody now? Hey guys, great to be here with you guys. Lovely, lovely to be here on this gorgeous Friday night, uh, South Carolina, and um, I just really appreciate everybody being here in the chat and everybody on the panel. Can't wait to hear y'all's answers to the questions. They're great questions. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, Ben has started sending these questions to us in advance, so uh, we at least we have a little heads up now. That might be helpful to all of us. All right, uh, Brother Cripps? Yes, fun Fellowship Friday indeed. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the questions. I'm glad everyone's here. Uh, I think we have everyone here. And uh, Jen's here, which is, always makes me happy. And uh, let's get to it. And hello to everyone in the chat. Hope that your week has gone well. And I hope you're ready for a fun Fellowship Friday. Well, and uh, Sister Angel, uh, she asked if we could let her do her introduction last so she can get her yes. computer working. Everything okay? Yeah. Yes, I, I got it fine. Um, I uh, woke up from a nap. I was having nightmares. I was really, really out of it. I, you know, if you ever have those like really weird dreams and you cannot snap out of it, um, uh, like like for like thirty minutes, I, I was having such a hard time. So I, I just got, I just got up and finally got uh, and and felt like I fully uh, woke up, but I was having tech issues. But um, I know we got some great questions tonight, and we have a finally have a full panel again. So I am, uh, I'm really uh, excited to be here, guys. I have, a, I have a tip for you, Angel. When you have those dreams, you make a really high-pitched noise in the dream, and then, then you would, miraculously you wake up. And then start laughing. That's a good idea. Oh, and then you yeah, laugh. that's a good idea. Yeah, and then you that's laugh. That's a good after. idea. I, I have figured out I was in a dream before, like in, in when I was a kid. I figured that out before that I was like, I so it became like a lucid dream. But, the, but this, you know when it's like just a series of short dreams because you keep waking up, and, and it's not really nightmares. It's just like, random intense dreams uh that's kind of what i was having so i feel i didn't i i, I it doesn't happen very often because i do usually realize i'm in a dream but i didn't even have a chance to with these because they were just so short and back to back but uh but that, that is good advice for anybody else uh, who uh gets you know, trapped in nightmares a lot so uh i think you had talked about having lucid dreams or something right crips sure i do yeah, yeah. From time to time. that's fascinating yeah we should talk about that tomorrow night all right. Uh, no, not to, huh? I was just going to say, I, tra I travel a lot. Yeah, I, I travel a lot. And um, I stay at a lot of hotels where I used to anyways prior to the, the virus. And uh, they would – they uh, the hotels always uh, put me in a room at the end of the hall because uh, they know I, I have a reputation <laughs> for screaming bloody murder in the middle of the night. So, uh, oh, so there's, really? There's a caveat to uh, making loud noises. <laughs> wow! Yeah. Happy, happy. Uh -huh. Wow, that's <laughs> you really are. Your your hotels know you well, then. <laughs> well, I'm wondering if I'm the only one that noticed and is uh, a little curious uh, that uh, 
seems that Brother Cripps and Sister Angel are having their sleep schedules synchronized. <laughs> no, they are not synchronized. <laughs> you you both just got out of naps. Um, with no, just no, naps. she didn't take a nap. Oh, I did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Angel. Yeah, I did. I woke up. Yeah, yes, I yes, Angel, yes. Angel, I, I meant to say Angel and Crips, didn't I? Say that. Uh, I thought you said Jen, but I no. could be wrong. No, you no. said Angel. Oh, Angel, <laughs> Angel Crips. Yeah. Yeah, so, we're up to uh, something. You might, uh, Brother Crips. You, on the mind. you may have to do some uh, with Jen. There, you may have some explaining to do, Lucy. <laughs> uh, I think that I think. I think the several hour uh, difference in, <laughs> in locations. I think I think I think we're good. Although I will say I, I don't normally I am disoriented by naps this late in the day. I don't know if you're you're a fan of them clips, but whenever I take naps late in the day, it's it's a recipe for like just disorientation and That's weirdness. True. It's early in the day, it's fine, but if it's late in the day, it's really weird. That's true, but they're, <laughs> but they're the best though. They're the best naps. <laughs> They do. I, I don't usually dream during naps unless I take. When I have had the weirdest dreams, I've had dreams when I take naps at this late in the day. Um, yep. But it messes up your whole night, you know. For the, oh, yeah. the rest of, it, I'm going to be up all night now. So <laughs> sorry, enough, enough about my nap. You're preparing for tomorrow. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, Good any, point, Jen. Any any given nap that you or Crips are on. There is a good chance that I am also napping at the same time. Because <laughs> I'm, I am in and out of naps all the time. Every time I get comfortable, all of a sudden I'm asleep again. There you go. Yeah. All right. Well, look, are we are we exceeding the fun limit yet? Nope. Not yet. Let's keep going. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, let's uh see what uh question ben has for us to start off okay this was one uh that we didn't get to last week uh maybe i should put a fun meter on the screen um so the the question is true or false there was an angel who was healing people in jerusalem at the stirring of the waters and that's detailed in john chapter 5 verses 1 through 8. Mm -hmm. okay uh, and uh, who submitted that? Was it someone on the panel or in the chat? Oh, uh, that was me. That was you. So you'll go last then, okay? Um, all right. Uh, who's eager to go first? I'll go first. All right. Go ahead. Okay. I was going to say leaning true. <laughs> it's interesting because I looked up this scripture in the Berean Study Bible. I read into the Berean Study Bible sometimes, that translation, and it didn't even have this scripture. And then I went to the King James Version, and it was there. <laughs> I was like, yeah. what in the world? Because I'm not super familiar with this uh, particular scripture. So when I read that first version from the Berean Study Bible, I was like, okay, so is this a, uh, what did you call it, Crips? Like an um, urban legend from back in that time? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then I looked up the King James Version, and there it was. And I was like, oh, wow, okay. Very intriguing. But that my, my answer is short. Um, I'm leaning true. All right. So leaning. Okay. Very good. Um, how about Sister Lisa? What do you say? Could you repeat the question? I heard it, but I just want to see how that first part was phrased there, again. There, there, there was an angel healing people at the, uh, yeah. uh, the, the, with the pool where the people had to get in the water before the water was stirred. There was mm -hmm. any healing people at that place. Right. True or false? Right, but yeah, but there was a way it was phrased at the beginning. Ben, could you read that question the way it's written again? Okay, well, I can also read the passage if that helps. But um, the the question is true or false? There was an angel who was healing people in Jerusalem at the stirring of the waters, and that's in John five uh, verses one through eight. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to hear it again the way it was phrased. <clears throat> I kind of take issue with well, the angel healing because, I mean, yes and no, that healing comes from the Lord. So it wasn't really the angel doing it. So that's why I was like listening to the way it was phrased. He would be, he would be an agent for the Lord to do it. But uh, 
short of, of saying, you know, absolute truth based on that fact, yes, he was there. And when the waters troubled, uh, people would step down in the water because there's the account of the man <clears throat> that Jesus ends up healing, who says that every time I get ready to step down, somebody steps down before me. <laughs> so I can't, I can't get my healing. So, I mean, I'm paraphrasing that, but yeah. So, yes, leaning true. It's a little weird the way it's worded to me, but yes, leaning true. That's all I have to say. Mm. All right. Uh, thank you so uh, much. Uh, but before we go on, though, I just let's acknowledge, I just see a message from Sister Renee uh, in the chat. She says, hi, Saint. Sorry, I could not join. I'm sick. Can't even keep down ginger ale. Please keep in prayer. Love oh, you. No. So oh, let's well, everybody, everybody <laughs> thank you, Sister Renee, to, to feel better. Okay. Yes, um, all right then. So, uh, Sister Lisa, uh, let me go, let me ask you again. Uh, you 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 answered already, right? Yeah. Right, Lawrence first, and then uh, Lisa Phillip. Angel, what do you say? Oh. Uh um, I'll just make a quick thing, leaning, leaning true. Also, um, I, uh, uh, I've looked at this passage before and, um, you know, uh, I think what Lisa said is correct. Obviously I don't you know, think it's, you know, it's the angel itself with healing powers, unless perhaps God has, you know, somehow, uh, uh, given those, you know, given that ability somehow to the angel. But, uh, uh, I think that, uh, the way the question was phrased, understand Lisa's trepidation about that question. But yes, I mean, I do, I do think it was a miraculous event and I'm sure that the angels carry out, uh, you know, uh, uh, chores and, 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 and errands and things like that for the Lord. And if uh, the Lord saw fit to have a healing pool, um, in this area for, for the infirmed, I think that it makes sense that the angel would, would be there to trouble the waters. Uh, I think that's kind of what their job is. I, ultimately, all power comes from the Lord, but uh, but leaning true. All right, thanks. All right, Brother Chris. Yeah, I also say leaning true. Um, doesn't say that anybody was healed, but it does say the angel um, comes at a certain time, certain seasons, and serves the water. So, uh, uh, we did look, Jen and I looked in, uh, for other uh, verses, other gospels that told the story, didn't, didn't find anything. Uh, apparently there's been quite a few uh, things written, articles written on this uh, subject of people, quote unquote scholars going back and forth, or, you know, whether, you know, what the deal is with the, with the pools and stuff. <laughs> um, you take it just what the scripture says, uh, there was an angel that, you know, was there that would stir the water and stuff. The the text doesn't say that people were healed, but obviously people expected to be healed. So they heard that somehow. Uh, I, as Jen said, I was I was joking that it could be an urban legend, you know, how those things get started. Uh, each country seems to have those, or they have uh, uh, stories, stories that go around, uh, things that happen in the area, things like that. Um. And uh, the last thing is that he was not corrected. When the guy was telling the story about what happens, uh, nobody said to him, Jesus didn't say to him, well, there's no angel that stirs the waters. And you know, he, he didn't correct him. So uh, because I can't know for sure exactly the whole context of it, then I would just have to say it ain't true. That's a good point, Jason. That's a really good point because, you know, we don't know what kind of angel it is necessarily. But because Christ didn't correct him, it makes you think that, like, if it were, you know, something evil, um, right. an evil spirit were doing, you think God, that Christ would correct them from their folly of, trust, you know, of believing in this. So it's really kind of, uh, but that, that was very interesting what you pointed out. I hadn't thought of that. Oh, cool. Thanks. Well, uh, Sister Lisa introduced another um, brilliant um statement uh, recently. Uh, quite a few of the things that we have in our truisms, uh, I originally heard from Sister Lisa, but uh, she recently said that uh, that uh, not everything uh, stated in the Bible is true, but everything in the Bible is truly stated. Um, and if you understand the distinction between these two points, that is, is that's true. 
um, there are some things in the Bible that are not true. Uh, there are lies, there's heresies, there's false teachings. Uh, um, Acts 15, verse 1, they say you can't be saved unless you're circumcised. That's a false teaching. It's in the Bible. Um, uh, but it's truly stated because it's t t truly telling us exactly what happened at that time. Uh, so uh, I, I think that uh, this would be under that same concept that the, um, uh, I believe this is truly stated that it, it actually was happening. Now, the question is, were people actually healed? It doesn't say that people were healed, but I don't know how you can conclude anything else uh, because uh, it, it, it seems to me that this is something that has gone on for a long time. And why would people continue to go there and continue waiting for the water to be stirred and do the, make all that effort if nobody ever got healed from it? It wouldn't take long before people say, well, this is a waste of time. So I, I think it's very logical to, to say that, yeah, that uh, people were being healed that way, which seems kind of odd. It's kind of odd how Jesus put the, the spittle on the dirt and made mud and put on the man's eye. There's some things that seem a little odd, but they, these are true. And I, you know, I don't understand the, the reasoning behind everything. Now, the question is, um, did the angel heal? Uh, or was it the Lord that healed? Well, I, obviously, I think we could all say that, that the, the Lord healed, but is it wrong to say the angel healed? Uh, it let me apply it to Paul or, or Peter. Would it be wrong to say that uh, Peter healed people in the name of Jesus? Uh, I don't think I don't think it's uh, uh, technically wrong to say that. I think it even actually says in the Bible that pe Peter and Paul were healing people. Uh, but they were doing it in the name of Jesus, so it was the power in, of Jesus that was doing it. But to say that he, they were, uh, they healed people, uh, I don't think there's uh, anything incorrect in stating it that way. Uh, anybody disagree with that? I don't think that it's incorrect to state it that way. The only problem is, <laughs> if you take, like, for example, the Catholic Church, and I grew up in it, so I get to criticize it. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. um, before my parents got saved, I was probably, yeah, I was about r roughly eight years old and I had went through all the little traditions and stuff and I'm very familiar with it. I uh, went to parochial school for what grade school and then, <clears throat> excuse me, all of grade school, which was first through the eighth grade. And then I went to a Christian school. I've never hid that. Now, uh, the way they take stuff and run with it is they believe the angels and or Peter himself did these things. This is the way they extrapolated. They don't ascribe it to Christ. And now maybe some have figured it out for themselves. I'm not saying every single Catholic in the world believes that, but as far as doctrinally, you know, they esteem these people to these high levels, not understanding they were fallible men. And it is the power of God that is being demonstrated. It's not their power. And so that's why I was making the distinction because there are people who hear that, just grab it and run with it. And oh yeah, Peter was healing people. And no, no, sir. No, he wasn't. Now, yes, it is correct to say that he laid hand on somebody, that somebody received their healing, but the power that did that was not Peter's. And I do think we should be careful, at least from time to time, <laughs> to make that distinction. That angel was there. It, it might be his uh, divine appointment by God. I ain't got no problem with that. But that power that was doing it was not his. It was the Lord's. And that's all I was pointing out. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, Ben, everybody's answer except you. Okay. Um, well, uh, I'll start by saying I believe that um, Scripture, in the context, will always answer all the questions we have Uh so we come to reasonable conclusions within the context itself. So all the questions that uh, we, we, you guys all posed, I believe that they, they can be answered uh, within this the the context. Um, let me just pull something up here. Um, so a couple things um, I would say off the bat is a, a lot of Bible critics uh, use this verse. This is one of the many verses they use, but they say, uh, "See, the Bible's endorsing such, um, uh, you know." A, 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 such a, a belief of these ancient peoples, superstition. The Bible is just full of superstitions of, of ancient peoples. See, and this verse right here proves it. 
Um, and I don't think that's the case at all. Uh, and in fact, if you read this verse in the King J in the King James, it doesn't. Uh, it, it it basically says that yes, there was a. It says, um, well, let me just read the maybe read the verse uh, in the New King James, and then because the New King James will tell you where there's a textual variant, and I think that's what you're seeing here. Um, okay, so it says this is verse one, uh, John five, verse one. After there, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed. And then the rest I'm going to read here is all a textual variant. It says, it is kind of in parentheses, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the, the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease they had. Close parentheses. And then, then it says, right after that, this is uh, not a textual variant. It says, now a certain man was there who had an infirmity of 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew what he had already, he knew already that he had been in that condition a long time. And he said to him, do you want to be made well? So um, I believe that is a that the, what I, the part where it says about, about the angel stirring the water, I believe uh, that's a textual variant. And I'm pretty convinced, um, you know, there's all, there's all kinds of science about textual criticism and looking at different manuscripts that, you know, looking at the, the, the diversity and the geography of manuscripts, the dates and all that stuff. And it, it's pretty much accepted uh, as consensus, uh, you know, it, by scholars who do such things that this is a textual variant. It wasn't in the original manuscripts. And I suspect that someone put up like a, like a, a, a scribe, uh, uh, put a, a parenthesis in there basically explaining what these people believed. Not that, not that this was a true thing, but this is what, this is why these people were doing it. And I think, uh, and I'll also to uh, Luke, you hit right on exactly what I was going to say. I had, uh, but, but what Lisa said actually that everything the Bible, the, everything in the Bible is recorded truly, but not uh, is not necessarily truth. Uh, and I think that's exactly what we're seeing here. And I also agree with Cripps that it, it, it I think it was an urban legend, um, and urban legends go on for a long time. I mean, it, it, there could have been some urban legend that happened fifty years prior to this, and yeah. people who are sick and you know have no hope. They would cling to that and sit there for fifty years and, and yep. wait for something to happen. Yep. Or it could be. Uh, I. If, uh, well, first of all, uh, I don't believe God uh, would heal people based on merit. Where oh you oh you're crippled, but you got to get in here first. I I don't think that that has anything to do with God whatsoever. I think it's a yeah. urban legend or some kind of demonic uh, uh, trick. Um, <laughs> and so I think uh, for that reason, I don't, I don't think it's real. Um, and also too, we all know that God, it, it, all through the old Testament it says many times that God is the one who heals you, not some angel, but God is the one who heals you. And then Christ right there asks him, who is God in the flesh? Do you want to be well? And, um, what's interesting about this whole story is that the man says to, to God, uh, uh, sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I'm coming another step down before me. And I, I think this is also kind of rebuke to uh, water baptism in some respects, because a lot of people say, oh, water baptism is required. And this man is doing the very same thing, saying, I have to have another man do something for me. Uh, I can't just baptize myself necessarily. I have to um, do point. I have, to have someone do this for me. I also think it's a double entendre because he says, I have no man. Well, you know, we know that Christ, the God man, is we, we basically present him before God as our sacrifice. And I, again, I, I saw the Old Testament Genesis where um, uh, uh, Joseph said to uh, th his brothers that if, unless your brother Benjamin is with you, uh, you will not see my face. And he was like a god to them. And so Benjamin's a type of Christ kind of, he says, unless you see, unless your brother's with you, you're not going to see my face again. And I think I see that as, you know, unless Christ is with us, we have a, that God man with us, uh, you're not going to see God's face. Um and so again, I, th I think it's a rebuke against uh, water baptism, a strong wa 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 rebuke against water ba baptism because Christ says, "We say, get up and be well." He just, you know, he said, "Take up your bed, walk." He just said the word, and um, and later on, it says uh, in that passage, it says, uh, "Christ said to him, uh, go and sin no more.'" 
And people say, well, what's that sin? Well, again, I, I believe that context always gives you what the sin was. We're not, we're not meant to guess at what the sin was. The sin was he was trying to rely on something else, a man or an angel, to heal him other than God. Um, and uh, so, I, I, again, I, I, I just saw a lot in that story. And I thought also, too, that it was a, you know, a lot of critics use it as, uh, you know, they use it as their ammo against the Bible. And I think it's just someone put a commentary there saying that this is what these people thought and that's why they were there. So I thought that was interesting. I don't, uh, I'm not familiar with uh, that being a problem for us uh, as far as the, uh, you know, the antagonist saying, look at that. That's how ridiculous that is. And that trying to make us uh, foolish because of that. I, I, I haven't seen it, but apparently others have. I'd like for you, Cripps, uh, you can go next, but uh, I want to get back to Ben after you're done. To ben, uh, when you use terms like textual variance, uh, you need to uh, define that for those people who uh, don't know this certain terminologies. But let's go to Cripps first and then come back to you. Uh, I thought I answered. Well, you're you're on. I thought you were ready, ready to go. Oh, no, I already answered. I was just I was agreeing with some of Ben's points that he made. Okay. I, I, your icon is on the screen, so I was responding to that because I thought you were ready to talk. I'm sorry. I, I'll, That's uh, the only reason I thought you were ready to talk. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. uh, ben, uh, give, give, explain the textual variance. What is that? Well, there's different texts. So, you know, there's the, uh, I don't, was it text to Sinaica, the Vatican text, the critical text, the, there's so many different, uh, uh, so by, the Bible was, we had the original autographs, obviously. The original autographs are the original letters that were written by the apostles or whoever the prophet was or his scribe. Those are the original copy. And then uh, scribes would copy that. And, but, uh, and uh, history shows um, by, by, by thousands of years that there's very, very little changes uh, in, in, the, um, in the text over thousands of years. Like the uh, uh, Dead Sea Scrolls prove that out. Um, that there's very little difference over hundreds, thousands of years. Um, and But it happens with the New Testament, too. There's, there are various textual variants where certain things will be different. Um, like, for example, in the New King, or the King James talks about, you know, uh, he who does his commandments. Uh, there's a book, there's a, there's a verse of Revelation that says something like, um, uh, the, those who do his commandments have the right to the city uh, or something like that. And then, but there's a textual variant that says, uh, no, he who washes his robes, uh, has the right to the city. So there's, there's different te there's different textual variants. Some are very minor. Some are kind of major, I, I, I think, um, with regards to that verse I just quoted in, in Revelation. Uh, but the thing is about uh, any data scientist will tell you uh, that uh, data integrity, um, when, uh, good data integrity has uh, fail safes in it or, or error correction built into it. So if there's a the part that doesn't make sense or seems out of place, you can use what's what's remaining of that message to reconstruct what it should have said. And I believe the Bible is all over the place has that. So there's things known as like merisms, they're called merisms or Hebrew parallelism, uh, where the Bible will say things once and they'll say it again right underneath it, and it, it with different words. Um, so even say it in the same sentence sometimes, but also I think within within the chapter, uh, you could see where Paul will say one, one thing and then he'll end it with we'll say the same thing at the very end but in a slightly different way and by by that you could you could tell that everything within that those bookends if you will is part of a, of a of a a message it kind of parameterizes the text so that if he's talking about like he says the word everyone you you know from within that context if he's talking about everyone in the world or everyone in, in that in, in that local church so uh, i pay super i, I really pay, pay a ton of attention to those kind of details because uh, I think it answers a lot of uh, false interpretations that people come to sometimes. But anyways, yes, textual vari variation are, vari are just differences in the uh, copies that we have, uh, the remaining copies. And uh, you could, it, it, there's a lot of people go back and forth. Okay, what's the, what's the real deal? What should it really say? And they, they, there's a science to it. They look at, okay, well, look at the number of other uh, variations that also have that variation or Look at the, ge the spread of the geography. You know, if is, is it located in a, a certain location of the world, um, and is it you know is it is it, is it uh, you know is it not in Egypt but it's in Turkey or you know things like that, and then also uh, the dates of those texts. So there's a whole science around it, and um, 
Uh, and so you could kind of, I think you could come to a reasonable conclusion, not only based on the text alone, the variations alone, based on what, all, what else scripture teaches, but also um, with regards to th that science that's called textual criticism, where they can leverage different tools for that methods. All right, thanks. Uh, Jen, I, I noticed you have a couple of points in the chat room you made. Did you want to elaborate any more? You, you said verses one through eight, and I think earlier you said John something, John chapter five or something. Uh, do you want to elaborate on those points? Someone in the chat was actually asking which uh, verse, chapter and verse it was, so I just was letting them know. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, well, listen, um, after listening to everybody's answers, uh, I, I think that there's really good, uh, if we were arguing this, uh, I would say there's good arguments on each side of all these questions uh, uh, regarding this one question. But uh, it's hard for me to imagine, though, that... Uh, uh, as much as it could be a, like a, a legend and, and it's, uh, oh, it was not, it wasn't really doing anything and uh, God doesn't work that way. I, all these things are, um, they're relevant to me, but uh, it's hard for me to get out of my mind that apparently people have been going to that pool for a long, long time. And I don't, I can't imagine people doing that if it never worked. Uh, if, if there was nobody was healed, uh, so I so I, I suspect that people were being healed. Otherwise, I, I don't I can't imagine that lasting very long that uh, ritual. Uh, all right, anybody wants to say more? Yes, I do. Go ahead. Uh, I can appreciate all of Ben's insights, and I do, but I do take issue with. Uh, the statement, and I'm not saying he was necessarily saying this was emphatic um, in particular, but that it was a sin for the man to be there waiting for that to happen. Uh, the Bible does not infer that in any place. And as you just pointed out, Brother Luke, why would all these people be doing it with that expectation if the healing wasn't actually happening? I don't think when he said, uh, basically, don't, you know, he tells him, he tells him, uh, don't sin anymore, lest a worse thing come unto you. I don't think that it was that he was there expecting to be healed was the sin. Right. Uh, that it was it was something else that he had done that had caused this infirmity in him. And that's why he was even seeking the healing to begin with. Mm -hmm. So that was what I wanted to take issue with. And I don't think also that this is um, any kind of metaphor or, so, or something. I do believe it was literal. I believe it was a practice. People were aware of it. This is why he points out to Christ. Somebody steps down in the water before me. I think that if it had been something they shouldn't been doing, Jesus would have said so. Yeah. Just like when he rebuked the Sadducees and the Pharisees for all the junk they were doing, and he told them and warned them about their traditions, I think he would have told that man specifically, this is not something you're supposed to be doing. So I just wanted to, to state that for the record. Yeah. Well, thank you. And those are good points. I, I uh, obviously uh, um, there are some strange things in the Bible. That, yeah. Uh, but but I believe them. I mean, I believe donkeys talked. I believe serpents talked. I believe we we have mud in uh, mud in your eye. We we have the get in the water before it uh, be the first one in the water. These things are. Uh, uh, it's hard for me to understand why God would use these methods, but look, there's some awful strange things in the Bible, and I believe it. Uh, so uh, I, I, this is just one more uh, that that I will add to the list. Uh, I don't understand it, but I'm not I'm not questioning whether it's uh, real. Okay. Also, uh, I, maybe I just didn't hear it, but I didn't. With all the uh, exposition, I didn't hear what Ben's final answer was. I'd be interested to know uh, how you answered. Was it certainly false, or oh, yeah, Ben? Yeah. yeah yes, I, yes, I answered certainly false. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, I answered certainly true, uh, based on well, I already gave you the re my reasoning behind it, but uh, I, I was curious how uh, several were saying um, what, what was it leaning true. 
rather than like, the story. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's, as I said before, it's probably good to not be so certain about a lot of things, you know, unless, unless it's really clear, uh, we shouldn't be so certain. Well, you know me, brother Luke, I try to answer certainly either way as, as often as I can. I don't, yeah. yeah. I don't like to answer the uh, leaning something one yeah, way. There, some things though, uh, you can say certainly because it actually states it explicitly right in the scripture. So obviously if it's clearly stated, uh, then, then we say certainly, but sure. uh, not clearly stated. Um, you got to be careful, but in this case, I went certainly because I, I I just gave a lot of weight in my my thought process. I gave a lot of weight to the idea that people have been doing this for a long time, and I can't imagine them continuing to this tradition if nobody ever got healed. I I understand that thought process because I think a lot of the things that we're told are old wives tales now like natural healing remedies and all that stuff. Yeah. It's like the same logic where they'll try to tell you that everybody's really dumb. And they don't realize that something doesn't work. They just believe it works, so it works. So, and it's like, no, people wouldn't keep doing it if it didn't work, you know. So I, I understand where you're coming, where you're coming from with that, Lou. Um, okay, great. Uh, I guess uh, have we exhausted this question? Yeah. All right, Ben. Let's move on. Okay. The next one is. This is also mine, but it could be any one of ours, probably. Uh, true or false, the pictures of planets we receive from space agencies bear no resemblance whatsoever to what they actually look like. Oh, me, I, me. I knew that. I was thinking about you, Chris. But and I asked this because uh, you said you said something in the past that I wanted to follow up on. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to All right, it. You're eager to go. Go ahead. Certainly, certainly true. They're they they look nothing like the uh, the the drawings and the computer generated pictures and and all the stuff that we've all seen since we were little kids and all the colored planets that are colored a certain way. They're all perfectly round, generally speaking, and all the different sizes. Like how they even measure it. they they say they know how to measure it, but I don't I, I don't believe that that they ha have any idea how to measure them. Uh, honestly, I mean, uh, sailors used the stars for years to, to navigate. What, uh, I believe that obviously that's not something you can argue with, but to measure the, the stars themselves and know exactly, you know, what they're made of. And I, I just don't, I don't believe that technology exists. And I believe that when God tells Job, uh, in, in scriptures, were you there when I laid the, uh, you know, uh, laid the foundations of the earth. I, I believe he was, wasn't just talking to Job. He was talking to man. I, every time I read that, that's the way I feel when I read it. Um, I feel like, uh, anyway, I'm getting off uh, topic here a little bit, I guess. Um, but I've actually seen uh, videos and pictures of, of amateur photographers with, uh, uh, Jen, help me out with that Nikon. What's the? P900. Yeah, thank you. Um, and more than one person separately that have taken pictures of actual stars. They are undulating. They uh, they are different colors. Uh, none of them are perfectly round that I've seen. Um, they look nothing like the pictures. And that's one of the biggest things that brought me over to the other side and looking at this. I think I've stated that before was the when I actually saw what the stars look like for real. Uh, so, Crip, Crip, uh, Crips, um, I, I, so uh, one thing I wanted to call your attention to is that when I said, okay, so I, the word says planets, not stars. I was curious what you thought about specifically the planets. If you thought those, like if we, the images we see of Jupiter, are they nothing like what you would see in a P900? Is that your? Yeah, I thought that's what I was saying. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mentioned stars. Okay. So they're, they're called wandering planets, right? Uh, how does the Bible refer to them? Wandering stars. Wandering stars. They're still stars. So I, yeah, okay. I was including all the stars okay. in, in with that because they even have pictures of some of the other stars as well, not just the big heavy hitters. And the planets, yeah. Big yeah, the, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they don't look anything, in my opinion, based on what I've seen from the other photos that, that amateurs other than NASA have taken. They don't look anything like it at all, no. So certainly, certainly true to the question for me. Hmm. All right. How about Sister Angel? Um, yeah, I would say uh, certainly true. Um, I did look in uh, the chat for a second, and I, I agree that um, 
the pictures that I've seen from, uh, and, I, and I have looked through uh, a telescope. We end up, we won a telescope not too long ago. And um, I tried, I mean, it, was really hard. It, it was really hard for me to find a planet. But what I did, um, you know, uh, my, it wasn't like the most focused thing, but the, so the pictures I've seen of like, you know, a really good teles a shot through a telescope, it's, you know, but it's like, you know, with the, uh, with the P, I was about to call it the P90X, the P, you know what they call it, <laughs> uh, whatever that is, um, they, they do, they do look vaguely similar to what, uh, what NASA shows us, except, um, what you can see through your telescope, um, it, it's clearly something more ethereal than the way NASA shows us with, you know, of course they have drawings of Pluto on Pluto and all this other stuff, but they'll sneak in there when they, they show us these, what they call composite images. Um, but, you know, they make it look like they can see these incredible details on the planets and they know for sure what everything is. But what I've seen does look like an undulating, um, like, like, yeah, I, honestly, to me, it looks like a spiritual entity. I don't yep. understand exactly all the yep. nature of, of exactly how God creates different different realms of creation. But yep. what I see through a telescope, it does not look like something I can go and stand on. And it doesn't look like, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just totally ridiculous to me anyway that people think he would leave out the fact that he created a whole bunch of other places like here um, that yeah. are, <laughs> you know, even anything remotely similar. What right. a waste, right? But, uh, but, but I mean, uh, the stars that I've seen through telescopes, I mean, they don't look all that much different than the planets, which are also <laughs> called wandering stars. Um, they don't really look that much different, except, uh, you know, the planets so-called are recognizable, you know, like they are similar to what we're told that they are from NASA. But, um, but you could, when you look through them, you can, uh, the telescope, you can tell that they, they could be of a totally different nature than what NASA is telling us, if that makes sense. They look similar, but of a different nature entirely to me <laughs> than what we're told. Um, and um, I also, uh, I, you know, I've wondered at, at times whether they can masquerade. Sure. Uh, if, if they are disobedient, um, you know, wandering stars, uh, I wonder if they, if they can, uh, you know, put on a show, so to speak, play along with the deception. I really do. Uh, that might sound crazy, but uh, I have had that had that thought before. So I'm yeah. curious to hear what other people think about that. Doesn't sound crazy to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm very curious to see what Jen has to say. Oh, I'm so going to bum you out. <laughs> <laughs> My babe. I'm sitting here like these guys are so eloquent and they come up with all these fantastic ideas that kind of travel around like the wandering stars. And in, and in my head, I'm like, all I can hear is certainly true. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that is my answer. I, I definitely think that what NASA portrays in their art is nothing like uh, what actually is. And I, I've also researched it, you know, looked into it on YouTube, looked into it. I, I had a P900 um, Nikon P90, I was to say P90X, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually just ended up selling it to, um, to, a friend, <laughs> to a sister friend. But um, no, they're they're just really, they undulate, they change shape even. Yep. It's it's just fascinating to me. It's absolutely fascinating. I've done photography for a really, really long time. And one of the things, it's a little off topic, but it's still with the stars. Star trails have always um, really mesmerized me. And that was yeah. one of one of the things that grabbed my attention when I first fell onto this topic of flat earth, mm -hmm. um, the fact that the star trails are just so perfectly, they're just perfect. And if we were spinning through space and wobbling and spiraling and yep. like just headed up in an upward direction, spiraling, it just, we wouldn't get those star trails. It's just impossible. Mm -hmm. right. So I did post in the chat uh, a link twice to some really, really good footage. Um, a really good YouTube footage of uh, somebody actually taking video of the stars. Oh, thank so, you. Yeah. So that's my answer. Certainly true. I'm not disappointed. Right. Awesome. <laughs> well, the reason I said that I was very curious is that uh, I've never heard uh, Jen uh, express her opinion on this subject. 
Oh, so ah. I, I was thinking that <laughs> Uh, for uh, the sake of peace in the house, uh, in the home, uh, you have to agree on this because I know that <laughs> when I told my wife that, <laughs> that, that the earth is uh, flat, stationary, covered with a dome, she wanted to have me committed. <laughs> <laughs> my son got very worried yeah. for me too. Oh, but no. uh, I, well, I think this is one of those things where um, there's a lot of things that people can disagree with uh, within the household. Uh, on the Bible, uh, but uh, this is something that, for some reason, it really sets people off. If you, uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you become a flat earther, people uh, are really gets them riled up for some yep. reason, uh, yep. and so it is really important. I think that uh, yeah. uh, in a marriage, that if you agree on that, if you don't agree on it, it can be really hard times. Yeah. <laughs> Well, oh. I was going to say that we actually met because of Flat Earth. Yep. Um, oh, so cool. a, lot, a lot of you guys don't know our story, but we actually met in uh, Flat Out Grace, which is a Facebook um, yeah. Christian Flat Earth group. And yeah. it was actually interesting because we both had been a part of a couple of other groups just to be there to ask people questions yeah. and, and sort of a safe place. Because mm -hmm. I, I went straight to my Facebook page when I found out. I was like, holy crap. And oh, my Thank gosh. You friends family they freaked out they yep. completely and i was like what i thought they were going to be thanking me for like yeah. bringing it to their attention yeah. um, so yeah. i was like whoops i was wrong um, yeah so, so oh that's so here. funny <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no so uh we actually met out on this one group and this one group particularly was made because a couple of other groups uh went into the hebrew roots and it yeah. got really crazy and so a bunch of us found refuge in this one particular group and we met each other and became friends and became friends with mm -hmm. a couple other people that were doing a radio show with mr cripps yeah that's how it happened yeah awesome awesome all right thank you uh, uh sister lisa what's your position on this well <laughs> uh, being that i only got this question just now uh I, I, there's a lot of information concerning this. Um, okay, I uh, went back. Uh, I, I answered. I'm trying to remember. I think it's certainly false. And then the the pictures of the the planets we received from space agencies bear no resemblance whatsoever. And my question was already submitted, so it ended there. Um, uh, bear no resemblance to what what whatsoever to what has that been at the finish of the question? Because it cuts it off here. To what they actually computer. look like. To okay. what they actually look like. Yeah, I don't trust NASA as far as I could throw it, which you can imagine is not very far at all. <laughs> so uh, um, I think my original answer to that was going to be as soon as they can show me something that is not CGI, I might believe them. Uh, let's see. When it comes to <laughs> the stars, it's interesting because as I was trying to see what is said in the King James with regard to stars, I pulled up a passage that uh, went a uh, Wikipedia page that said planets in the Bible. And it says, except for Earth, Venus and Saturn are the only planets expressly mentioned in the Old Testament. And I'm going, really? I don't remember them being mentioned. But here's what it referred to. Isaiah 14, 12. Now, anybody that knows Isaiah 14 is talking about the fall of Lucifer. And it says, it, it says is about one Hillel ben Shahar called the king of Babylon in the text. Hillel, which means now they have it here morning star, but that's not what it translates to. It meant son of the morning or son of the dawn. Now it's translated as Lucifer in the Vulgate Bible, but its meaning they have here is uncertain. Well, and I want you to know that's the inference to, to Lucifer. So I can't find the names of those particular planets in the Bible. Is the Bible refers to them as wandering stars, as you guys so astutely pointed out. We see it in Genesis 1, 14 through 19. So uh, it's interesting. So that's why I answered certainly, certainly false. Um, I think that it's just like you guys were alluding to. They are, um, as the Bible says, the stars are actually the angels. I do think that's true. I have seen where they have moved. You, you know, I'd be sitting outside at night looking up and one darts across to somewhere else. And I'm like, what, what the heck was that? And they'll say it's a shooting star. Well, 
it moved. That's all I know. So, uh, you know, literally, there are, I think there's another scripture that references that the, the, they are called the watchers. So literally, they would if they're up there and that's angels, then they are watching us. So, uh, I, you know, I believe the Bible over everything else. And I believe that most of it is literal, except when it lets us know it's not being literal. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I don't believe NASA as far as I could throw them. And I don't think anything they tell us is what <laughs> it really is. And that it's all de- uh, created to actually cause people not to believe the Bible and to remove them from a belief by showing us things that, oh, isn't that cute and pretty and amazing yeah. and make us question and contradict what the Bible actually says. Thank so, you. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to ask you, though, sister, um, based on listening to your answer, I think you're in agreement with with us. But I, I so therefore your answer should be certainly true. Is there certainly false if I'm reading the question correctly? Read the question again and, and then and then tell me if you want to change your answer. OK, yeah, yeah could you because I lost words at and everything. Yeah. It's uh, the pictures, the pictures of planets we receive from space agencies bear no resemblance oh, no to what mm-hmm. they actually look like. Then, they, yeah, it would be certainly true on that. And I think I answered that. right. I think I, guys, I don't know. I'm, the, I'm not here all together tonight. So uh, I got a family member that's going back and forth with me about something while I'm muted. So I'm kind of all over the place right now. But yeah. Uh, Yeah, that's right. I would say certainly true in that case, because they don't want us to know that, like, okay, to me, the evidence that what we're saying that they're angels, the fact that Wikipedia pulls that up, it goes to Isaiah 14 as the inference for uh, the, the, the stars now. The poor, what we know as wandering stars. Why did that come up when I was looking for the search that I did, which was, what does the Bible say about the planets? Well, it immediately goes to the wandering stars. So, yeah, okay, they, you know, <laughs> they try to hide it, but, but, but it's right there in our face if we pay attention. <laughs> All right, thanks, um, Ben. Um, um, I know you, there's somebody voting more than once uh, and throwing off the score, I guess. But could could, could you tell me what the you think the count is the breakdown on this? Yeah, someone's got uh, has no life because they voted 136 times. I think I know what it is. <laughs> um, I think it's one of the arch enemies of Renee. Um, I think he was here last week. Uh, so get a life. But um, so the uh, breakdown is there was uh, 136 said leading leading true. Uh, 13 said uh, leading. I'm sorry. Uh, the 136 said certainly true, 13 said leaning true, four undecided, three leaning false, and seven certainly false. Hmm, interesting. Well, how many people do you think are actually voting uh, legitimately here? Normally, what do we have, like 15 people vote on average? Yeah. So you got, uh, let me see, 27, not counting certainly true. And if certainly true is 10, it would be uh, 37. That's still a lot of people, more people voting tonight than usual. There's only 30 people watching, so you can't have 37 votes, can you? Yeah. yeah. So, um, all right. Um, but the point I was tr- trying to get at is if we knew how, the, how it broke down in the congregation, and I, I, I've tried to figure this out in the past, but I do think on this question about, uh, you know, is the earth a ball or is it flat and the, the other related questions that we're probably pretty equally split in this congregation, which is interesting because it's still a minority view uh, overall. But uh, in this congregation, it's it's pretty evenly split. And on the panel, um, we don't have one dissenter or everybody on the panel. Um, did you think that that was a, a litmus test that you, you have to be a, a flat earther to join the panel? Is that what you thought? Who are you asking? That was a, a rhetorical joke. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, okay. Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. It's no, horrible. We would have had it as center, but she's not feeling it today. So. Sure. I, I have yeah. to explain my joke. Oh, no. I'm oh, horrible. Yeah. It's my joke. It was a joke. I remember the express questionnaire Luke gave everybody. No, I'm just saying. It's not true. That's not true. That's total fiction. No, yeah. I, I was actually surprised when we started talking about this because I didn't know where people were. Nobody ever talked about it until it started coming up. And then um, when uh, Brother Cripps came in with all his radical, crazy ideas, and then uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, everybody started kind of chiming in that they were, yeah, that's what I believe. And, and so I... I started looking at it once I found out all the, some of the different things that we had absolutely 100% been lied to about. When I looked, I said, well, psh, I might as well check out Flat Earth because they've been lying about everything else. And yeah. sure enough, there it was. And I'm going, it was right in front of our face the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> it's in yeah. scripture. It's, it's yeah. right there. It is. Yeah. Well, he doesn't, I, you know, when he says stretch forth the line, he is talking about the horizon. Yeah. And it's flat. Yeah, yeah, he's it's not looking a ball. Yes. What about fish eye? <laughs> you know, that's the I lens. Mean, no wonder. I know, I, know. <laughs> I know you know. Well, I think I need to set the record straight so there is no confusion. Uh, that uh, There is no test uh, that you must be on uh, the flat earth side of the question to join a pa the panel here. <laughs> that's not a requirement by any means. It just so happens that uh, we all happen to agree on this one. But... Um, uh, of course, Luke, you were the latest comer, right? I mean, in terms of being, in, you know, seeing probably, that reality. As far as, as far as I know, I was, yes. Uh, yeah. And I, I put up with you, the crazy attitude for a <laughs> while, but it, 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 it took me about a year, a year of effort to prove everybody wrong. I finally realized that uh, I was the one that was wrong. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, that's how it happens to a lot of us. Yeah. Well, yeah. there's there's very few I've seen um, uh, people that even people that call themselves Christians that are e maybe even of a slight conspiratorial mind that are on YouTube. Uh, I've seen very few of them. Uh, uh, like over over the past year, especially year or two. Now I don't know for for sure they go all the way flat Earth, but at this point it seems almost consensus that NASA lies. Yeah. for people in like the Christian truth realm and, and they're at least flirting with the idea of flat earth. I, I've gotten, I don't like to announce it. I don't really like to, to beat people over the head with it because uh, the flat earthers have done so much damage yeah, to, to that, that I just, I, you know, it, I care more about whether or not you just, you believe the Bible at its word. And I care more about whether you know better than to believe NASA, <laughs> like over right. the Bible. So if I can at get, least get yeah. you to realize that NASA lies, if you want to hold on to this weird theory that they gave you that you would have never come up with on your own, that it's a ball of fine. <laughs> I really don't care. That's not the point. The point is really, you know, because maybe it is like at least a half sphere or something if you can include the firmament. Right. I don't really care. It's all irrelevant to me. But what I care about is if you will use the Bible to discern creation before you'll trust any input from NASA. That's really all I go. care about. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, if we're not going to believe evolution, why are we believing their other theories, their half-baked theories that they're coming up with? It makes no sense to me. Right. Yeah, evolution, and I think True. Revolution was put forward to, again, as I was saying, the same thing that NASA is doing, mm -hmm. to detract from the Bible, to yeah. make it look like the Bible is myth and it's crazy. And yeah. they had to pull the Bible out of the school since you made that point real quick about evolution. They had to because a five-year-old could read where it said everything begats after its kind. Now, as soon as they found out what begat meant, it means they everything makes the same thing that's itself. So. Yeah. People make people and little chickens make chickens and all that. And then they would have walked out on their parents' farm and they would have seen, oh, little cows having cows and horses yeah. having horses and chicken having chicken. So the Bible is true. Now, yeah. according to them, they tell us that real science, real science is demonstrable, provable, and repeatable. Uh -huh. And the Bible says everything begats after its kind, which is demonstrable, provable, and repeatable. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Exactly. Amen. Yeah, amen. Uh, the, the thing is, I, the idea of a Darwinian type of evolution, 
is pretty much the accepted position. I would say probably 75 to 90 percent of Americans and most of the you know the advanced countries in the world. If, if you have much industry or science in your country, you probably um, uh, your country has embraced Darwinism. Uh, and yet, uh, if you really study that, it doesn't take long at all to realize that it's actually impossible and it's so absurd. Uh, so when when we, we we realize that they've been lying to us about that for all this time and and how absurd it is. Uh, I thought that nothing could be more absurd than that. And so, but until I realized that, wait a second, what about the idea that we're on a spinning ball flying through the universe about a million miles an hour, and yet we can't even feel like we're moving. Right. <laughs> and we're having Talk a- about taking it on faith. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we've been told a lot of lies that uh, we've, um, we've, Swallowed it, hook, line, and sinker. It's crazy because I think the, one of the biggest hurdles we're going to get over is, well, how could they really be lying? But we know that 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 you know the Bible specifically tells us that the kings of the earth, you know, they take counsel together. They're essentially, yes. conspir- they ha- they're in a conspiracy, a concerted conspiracy against the Lord yes. and against His anointed. So I mean, I don't. It's, it's not a hard. It's not a, a, a you know a. a a, a leap for me at all that that yes. that NASA would lie, but I I also understand that the peer review system and the compartmentalization of organizations uh, make it to where people don't have to consciously know that they're lying. They don't have to like like a lot of these um, different levels of authority have are, you know are privy to only a certain amount of information. Yeah. And, and and also, you know, they are, they're taking it on faith based on what we call empirical evidence. Um, but, you know, th- their empirical evidence is taking the word of, of people that they just trust, you know, at face value from the past who have a big name. Oh, well, he established mm-hmm. this and he established this. So they don't start from the bottom and try to prove it all mm-hmm. to themselves. Nope. nope, nope, nope. They're starting. For, yeah. So <laughs> they don't have to it makes know you think that of they're public lying. School. Like public school, exactly. you're, you're taught to parrot things. You're not taught to, hey, let's look into this. Yeah, it's not yeah. really learning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're not proving their premise, their their foundational premise at all. So, yeah. uh, so that's one thing I always like to tell people so that they don't they don't get you know vertigo trying to imagine all these people <laughs> involved in this this conspiracy willingly, willfully, you know, cognizantly. Uh, there's probably very few people that that actually know. But um, I think with this theory coming out, we know with so many people rejecting this globe Earth model, you know, more and more people now at NASA do have to become willfully ignorant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah, big a they... lie would you have to tell to hide God? Yep. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he's so big. Of course. Yeah. Well, this is a subject that uh, it should be obvious to everybody listening that we love to talk about it. We, we're it's fascinating and it's uh we're passionate about it uh and yet a lot of the people don't want to hear it and say can't why don't you move on because uh is that all you want to talk about well we don't talk about it routinely like every every time we, no. we talk uh, it comes up every once in a while if you don't like us talking about this then ben is to blame because ben wrote the question. <laughs> ben. So, and, and you have to remember to keep a conversation going we have to talk about things that interest us yeah. So, so you know, <laughs> if you're not on the panel, try to be understanding. <laughs> Everybody throw your complaints directly to Ben. Okay. It's a good question, Ben. Don't listen to Brother Luke. <laughs> All right, Brother Ben. Yeah. Uh, you did write the question, so we need to get your answer now. Uh, well, a couple things. Um, you, the, you guys are right. I mean, what, the Charles. I think his name was Charles Lyell. He was the. Uh, forefather of uh, geolo- modern geology and uniformitarianism. Uniformitarianism is, is basically teaches that the key, the key, the, the, the key to the present is the past. So if you want to, oh, I'm sorry, the, the, the key to the past is the present. So if you want to know what happened in the past, you have to look at processes as they are now to, mm-hmm. you know, to extrapolate backwards and figure out, okay, well, well, we know that this, you know, erosion happens at this rate. So Grand Canyon must've taken this millions of millions of years and things like that. But uh, obviously it's a paradigm, 
uh, that it's a false paradigm. And so they see everything through that paradigm. And um, but yeah, Charles Lyell, he said when he uh, started his theory that his goal was to depose Moses. So he, they're not uh, shy about that. No. Uh, and the other thing about the spinning, you know, spinning balls and the spinning, spinning, spinning. Well, the whole idea is get your head spinning. And that's exactly what Satan does. He wants everything to be relative and, and to spin eliminate. programming. Yes. Uh, eliminate all absolutes and everything's relative. Um, and so I don't think that's any secret. Um, but with regards to the plants themselves, um, I, I want to ask this question because, uh, well, I have a friend on Facebook. Um, on the rare occasion I check in there, um, he he's lately been posting. He's a Christian, and I don't have any reason to doubt that he's uh, you know messing around at all. Um, uh, that he is taking uh, pictures of of space uh, or of the 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 heavenly bodies, uh, and he's got a, a pretty sophisticated setup. He's, he's he's progressively getting better and better with it. And I know the P P nine hundred is a good uh, camera. I'm not sure it's the best for looking at the planets, however. Uh, I know it's like good, pretty good for the moon, but it, I don't think it can compare to a, a really, uh, a really good quality um, telescope with yeah. a good camera attached to it. And mm -hmm. he's got some pictures of like Jupiter and things like that that do line up with what NASA is saying. Now, again, that doesn't mean I believe what they're doing. You know, I, I think most of their pictures are completely false, but I think they do bear some resemblance to the real thing just because they know that, uh, you know, consumer technology at some point would have would have caught up. To the point where they, we can see these things for ourselves. Again, I could be wrong, but uh, and also too, I, I would say that I see the planets and the stars. I agree. As, I see the planets and the stars as types for spiritual um, realities. I don't see them as actual uh, angels. That's just my view. Um, I could, I could, you know, I could change tomorrow. But um, the, I, 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 but I, but sitting here thinking, I thought, okay, I bet you that the, I, I don't know the orders of the planets. I mean, I, I have a relatively decent order I, I basically understand the order but i don't know the exact order but i'd be willing to bet that everything starting with uranus and afterwards i bet that it's all completely fiction uh just because i know how they uh yeah because we can't see it <laughs> right you can't see it. it's all fake you can't see it you got to use their special tools you got to take it on their authority i bet yeah. you they're completely fabric fabricated in fact yeah. Pluto, i think that's obvious that it's it is that's um but the like uh, Jupiter, for example, he's got good pictures of Jupiter. It looks relatively close to it, but I, I do agree that yeah, they're doing all kinds of weird things. Like they'll look on Saturn, they put like a hexagram on top of it. You know, it's like little code for their little gods. I wouldn't um, be surprised if that's really there. Yeah, it could be, <laughs> I it wouldn't could be, be surprised because that's one of the reasons why I, I do feel there's a spiritual quality to the planets is because um, th we're told they're 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 you know in some way disobedient. Um, uh, at which I tend to um, it makes sense why where they're worshipped, we worship those planets. So you know, uh, it, you know, people in like uh, Rome, and I mean, all, <laughs> there's so many uh, false gods attached to these planets, and and the planets themselves are worshipped. So um, it wouldn't surprise me if they are directly spiritual entities, especially with the the uh, occultic things about them, like you mentioned the what's it, the hexagram. <laughs> Oops, sorry, sorry, noise. I, I clicked on something. And then also um, the the strange sounds that they say come from Jupiter, um, yes. which I wouldn't be surprised if those are the real sounds. But Jupiter also too. I was going to mention that is that and this is I mean this is provably fake because they have a pic they have an old picture of Jupiter and they have a newer picture of Jupiter that was taken supposedly uh, decades later, but it's the exact same photo. But at the top of it they have like a like a almost like a crown on top of it, like a lightning crown. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. But, so, but so, I mean, it's almost like it's a crown, like you're crowning their god or something. I don't know. But, um, oh, yeah, yeah, so I, I just thought that was interesting, guys. I wanted to get you guys' take if you guys thought those were completely um, fabrications or if they were somewhat based on reality. I think they're somewhat based on reality uh, of what, you know, if you had a, a, your own telescope, you could you could see something 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 similar. Um, we could get, you know, it, I don't uh, – Jim Jim has got an uh, awesome telescope. Um, maybe so we could get, get some pictures from him. But, uh, yeah, so I think there's some – um, I think, I, I think again, some of our, our, our uh, real photos, or actually, I, I don't think any of them are probably real photos. Uh, uh, they probably are just uh, artistic depictions of what they saw and make them look more grandiose, make it look like they have more power and more they than it. they really do. Yeah, you're right, Ben. They admit that. They, it, on, yeah. on their actual website, they're admittedly renderings. They're not, they're, they're not mm -hmm. called real photos. Right. Can, also, can I yeah. ask a question? I was yeah. wondering, 
how is it that we can look up when I was a little girl, my grandmother showed me how to find the big dipper and the little dipper. Yeah. Now, if, if we're on a spinning ball, mm-hmm. how come we're always able to look up there and they're in the same place? Exactly. Yeah. And traveling through space, supposedly in multiple different directions. I mean, with the galaxies yeah. traveling and all of that, and we're traveling through the galaxy. So that doesn't make any sense. I'd well, love to hear somebody explain that. Maybe someone could explain to me why all in the history of man observing the moon, that we only see one side of it uh, all this time. Why has it, if it, it, is it so perfectly synchronized with the earth in the movement that it, it, it never shows us anything but this one side? That right. seems like an amazing coincidence to me, beyond belief. Indeed. Also, the full eclipse is like so perfectly shaped; it, it fits perfectly with the moon. I mean, it's not there's no overlap in in the size at all. Yep. Right. Uh, yeah, right. It's perfect. Uh, but let me uh, be, before we move on, I'll just say that um, um, my channel, uh, Brother Luke. Uh, n- now we've got most of the old content from Sin City Preacher up. Um, ben is been able to upload 54 of my playlists um and there's uh probably about 60 to 64 so maybe five or ten more playlists left but the most recent one he uploaded was was flat earth could it be true now there's only 26 videos on that playlist so far so when it's done it'll probably have like 126 but um if you go to that playlist and you'll see videos that address all the different uh, questions and, and objections that you may have uh, about these these things. So if you don't want to look into it, if you've already looked into it, that's okay. But if you're curious how uh, all of us uh, who uh, I, I think you, you should be able to conclude that everybody here on the panel is reasonably intelligent and yet and yet we've all believed this crazy thing the earth is flat and stationary and this center it's geocentrism rather so um uh Can it, I, oh. you go ahead i was gonna mention one more thing before we got off topic <laughs> um when you look at the astrological signs or astronomy wait what is the word i'm looking for not not the psychic. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was like, not the psychic stuff. Um, and the way God created it, it's like a clock. Yes. And when you're when you're thinking about the stars and the moon and the sun being in the firmament and it rotating around us, it's like a clock. And it's crazy because people from way back from the beginning of time have used it as a map mm-hmm. to travel, to know which direction to go. People on the yeah. seas traveling, knowing where to go. It's just, how could that even be possible if we were spinning a thousand miles an hour at the equator, you know, going around the sun while our whole galaxy spirals up through an infinite universe? It's just, it's impossible. Yep. Anyway, I just wanted to say that real quick before we got off topic. Um, Oh, man, I will, I wanted to add too, just, I saw Laura Stubbs in the chat. She said, um, basically we can't, that if the hurricanes making, like the hurricanes, disprove flat earth essentially so uh, she said something about them rolling around out there uh, i just would you know with anything else <laughs> with anything else not just this you know uh the subject of hurricanes how much do you know about hurricanes that you can actually verify for yourself i mean i i lived through hurricanes you know my whole life growing up in the keys it was like yeah. a normal event but uh, i i mean everything that i saw from the the weather channel which by the way like the weather channel is a is a, is a cia front uh, I, I could go into that in another, <laughs> I mean, I know that from personal uh, knowledge, uh, that's, a, that's a CIA, uh, there's a lot of stuff that they put up on there that's totally bogus, that's messaging, they use it. Um, it I know it sounds crazy, but I mean, I'm, I could just tell you, uh, <laughs> for people I know that were uh, connected to this, this is, this is, this is a, a known thing. Um, but th- that, a, lot of that, <laughs> a lot of that, a lot of, yeah, it, yeah, it's kind of interesting, actually. Um, but a lot of the um, the, the, the satellite phot- photographs and, and everything that we're told about what they know about weather, we, we know the Bible says God controls the weather, right? So I, I don't I, I don't trust that that what they tell us necessarily about about hurricanes, whatever you think might disprove the flat Earth. I mean, how do you have you verified that information? This is what this is the, you know with everything that we talk about with this subject. So much of the objections depend on. It would be like trying to disprove what we're saying with, with you know, with NASA 
photos and stuff like that when you can't even verify that those things are real. And, um, and, and I, I, I just I don't think that uh, something as complex as the, the natural systems on this earth, you know, when it comes to like weather systems and all of that, you know, a, a whole lot of that is stuff that we take on faith that scientists told us, well, we know how it works. We figured it out. But science would, right. would totally reject the idea of the flood. And that it's even possible for the fountains of the deep to open up, you know, um, as the, you know, so the, they say that they know they, I mean, they're, they're denying the fact that, that there's water um, under the earth, mm-hmm. all over the earth that, you know, some people now have called primary water, which, um, you know, has been proven in places like Libya. Um, they, they, they tell us so little about what, 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 what they actually probably do know about creation because they presented a false model. So, um, I, I, you know, I do believe God controls the weather and, you know, he says that, um, that um, correct me if I'm wrong, but angels at the corners of the earth control the winds. Um, um, and right. <laughs> there's so many, so many, uh, what we will call metaphorical explanations of, of weather and, and just natural phenomena in the Bible that is, you know, the that God describes, you know, what we would call it, you know, miraculous or supernatural, and um, and those and science doesn't present us with any of that. So mm-hmm. so uh, j- always always second guess what you're just taking on faith from man and man's knowledge, because I mean, I, I you know, I don't know, I can't even think why you would think a hurricane would disprove flat Earth, <laughs> but um, but I know it probably has something to do with the model that you've been presented by science as opposed to something you got from scripture. So um, just uh, wanted to point that out. Right. Well, um, unfortunately, uh, the, the general population will refer to um, many Christians as people who don't believe in science. Um, uh, and it is true, I think, uh, that we and, and many others uh, don't believe in certain scientific conclusions. Uh, there right. are some things that we believe that there were been told lies, and uh, but then there's a lot of things in science that uh, uh, probably most of it, by the by far the most of it, we don't dispute. But there are some things that are really big lies that we've realized, and once you realize you've been lied to, I think a healthy attitude to adopt from that point forward. If you haven't already done it, there's a saying: skepticism is the antiseptic for your mind. So uh, be a skeptic. If you hear anything claims on the Discovery Channel or Planet or, or Planet or whatever it is, you're watching all these shows that that to give me all this scientific uh, uh, conclusions about everything. Ask yourself, how do they know that? How do you know that? Yeah. Yes, you thank you. Exactly, Luke. I never and, thought to ask. <laughs> If you start asking and, and then follow up, well, how do you know that? Well, and you really then don't accept their answer because their answer is BS. Yes. It's all it's just based on assumptions. Yeah. 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 They say it's right. like theoretical models. Miles away. Mm-hmm. How do you know? Did you stretch out a what a craftsman ruler? <laughs> yeah, that, that's do you what have I, one that long? <laughs> yes, Jen. That's exactly what I was saying about Job. And he's having that conversation with Job. Yeah. You weren't there, Job. Were you there when I? You can't stretch a tape out over a ball. Trust me, I've been in construction. That's not how it's done. I, well, I mean, Mallory, that they also too is like they. I think they try to uh, they try to emulate God because like God created the, the yes. universe out of nothing, and the gospel <laughs> and our spiritual new birth is created essentially out of nothing. You know, just words you can't touch. And I think that's exactly what they do. They get their. Uh, their people in the right places to create these sciences, uh, their mathematical formulas that that that's found that forms the foundation, and then everyone else just kind of plays along and, and riffs off that uh, that those mathematical formulas or discoveries or just frauds. And um, every part of it, every every science is uh, hijacked, I think, essentially with with these agents of Satan. Um, and I, I I see it all over the place. And you can once you see their language, you see it all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's very true. They they, well, they they drop hints all over the place on purpose. It's like talking. Yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to create a, a, a reality in people's mind out of nothing. It, it's literally nothing. It's just all fabrication. But they're trying to create reality. Temples and men. The word of man thing. versus the word of God. Yes. You know? yeah. yeah. Very true, Ben. That's uh, a good let me, point. Uh, let me suggest uh, 
before we lose half of our congregation because uh, half <laughs> of the people don't want to hear about this anymore, <laughs> I think. But let's move on to the next question then. Okay, I do want to say, um, I, I want to apologize for not uh, being more uh, careful about reading comments. I, 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 would, I think we all definitely want to hear everyone's comments and I, I've done a poor job and and it's not just me though. No one else has reminded me either. So, um, except for Angel. Just I now. sent you a text. Okay, I yeah. Know. I, I know. I wanted to see uh, what the I, objections were. Yes, we all definitely want to hear uh, your comments, and, and I will do. Uh, I will not move on to the next question. Remind me, everyone, until I re read those comments. However, for this particular question, it looks like our spammer uh, has ruined it for us. So, um, hopefully, he goes away, or she she goes away. I'm sure it's a he though. I think I know who it is. Um, and uh, so, yeah, ready for the next question. So the next question is related kind of, uh, uh, but it's Heather's. So I'm not to blame on this one. Uh -huh. um, and the question is true or false. The dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. That's easy. Go. All right. Uh, how about uh, Jen? Will you go first? There you go, <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> you know, I, uh, as you guys get to know me, you'll, you'll come to find out that I'm really bad at relaying information. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm great at research and reading. I, especially when I'm shy and I like get nervous. Well, that's um, <laughs> what it is. It's not that you're bad at it, Jen. My brain's like, poof. <laughs> you're a good company with gone. me. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. Um, you know, I'm, the jury for me is still out and part of this and Crips and I were talking about this earlier. I do believe dragons existed and we're probably going to lose half the rest of the congregation. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do, but I think they're misrepresented and I do think that there are a lot of fossils that are faked. Mm -hmm. um, this is just from research that I've done uh, going down many rabbit holes. But like I said, the, the jury for the, well, I don't want to say that. The jury's not necessarily out for dinosaurs per se. I, I do think that they were either something else, but there was a lot that actually didn't exist. I don't even know if that made sense. But mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we'll come back to me. I'm still thinking. <laughs> All right. Don't worry. You did an excellent job. And oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks. I'd like to go next. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I heard somebody make this argument, and I've almost been fully persuaded. I'm not going to say I'm 100 yet, but I think that uh, – what was the question again? Is the dinosaurs lived, lived millions, millions years, of years, years ago? Right. False. I'm going to say for, certainly false. And the reason I'm going to say certainly false is I think that this ties in perfectly with Genesis 6, mm -hmm. uh, being that they – Okay, if you remember the, the fallen ones, the Bible said they sinned against man, they sinned against beasts, they sinned against uh, a mm -hmm. bunch of things in creation. And I think that these things were created by them and all that wickedness they were doing. And this is one of the reasons the Lord sent the flood. That's what I perceive. I can't, I ain't 100 on it yet. I was, haven't really started looking into that whole concept about it. But I think this is one of the reasons for the, the judgment of uh, the flood. It wasn't just men having been perverted, mm -hmm. but they corrupted creation. Uh, yes. And it yep. says so there in the Bible. And I think that's that's where uh, they came from. Yep. I do. Because man could not have survived <laughs> uh, with those things being here. First of all, it, we know the earth is only roughly, if you estimate based on, the scripture about somewhere around 10,000 years old. Some people estimate between seven and 10,000 years. So wherever, you know, throw a dart on that. I did. It, it, it's not a, it's, it's not a, uh, a requirement for salvation, thankfully, because we'd yeah. all be in trouble. So that's good to know. So I'm not going to fight and, you know, fight anybody over that. However, I perceive based on what the scripture does show us, I believe dragons were hundred percent real. And they might Woo! even have one hiding somewhere. I do. Listen, the Bible talks about, uh, what is it, the Hemotho Leviathan? Why does it talk about that? You yeah. know, it's in there. So there's some creatures in, 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 in that ocean. And this is something I want to talk about tomorrow on my broadcast. I'm just going to yeah. give you a little tip. Yes, we're going to talk, right. about, we're gonna talk about what's going on. Why does the, uh, and then also the Bible never calls it ocean. It calls it seas. 
And it's something else with I discovered D? we're going to talk about. C's, S-E-A-S. No, no, it's I was asking with D. D is D oh. going to be on the show tomorrow. D's going to be on, and, and we're going to yeah. drop this on him like it's hot. So <laughs> he, he's just going to have to run with it and, and, you know, roll with the flow. But we're going to talk about this tomorrow night is what's going on out there in them C's. Because there's some things we should see about the sea, and we're going to look and see <laughs> tomorrow night, okay? So, nice. Uh, but, yep, I got some information about that. <laughs> yes. I think we're going to have a wonderful conversation about that tomorrow night. It's going to blow some people's minds. And then, uh, uh, listen, all we're saying is think outside the box. I'm not saying none of this stuff is written in stone. But if we look at it in light of scripture, this is why they hate the Bible. Because yeah. the Bible is the code breaker, honey, to all their lies. That's why they're like, oh, we got to get it out of the school. We can't have people thinking for themselves. No, yeah, we no, can't have that. No. You know, so, but yeah, so I would say, again, now I lost my place and I got fired up and excited. Dinosaurs <laughs> lived millions of years ago, certainly false. And, and um, for my answer, I would like see Genesis 6 because I think that's where they came from. Man could not have lived with these things because they was people eaters. You look at the mm -hmm. teeth on them things. For the ones that are real that they haven't faked, okay? Mm -hmm. Those things were carnivores. And what are we? Hamburger in their mouth. So, <laughs> no, there's, <laughs> there's no way that man was walking around with these creatures for too long. So, you know, uh, that's what, one of the reasons I believe the flood was sent as well as man having been corrupted, like the Bible says. So, see, this is why when you start looking at stuff just plainly as what the scripture says, and then what they show that they haven't fabricated that we can determine really is real, you see it lines up perfectly with the Bible, and the Bible just comes out shining like it's supposed to as the mm -hmm. shining beacon of truth that it is, yes. and it exposes all of their lies. That's why they don't want us looking at it and believing mm -hmm. it. I'll be taking some notes tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> like you're gonna have you to because you gotta stay up for this one you're gonna love this mm -hmm. all right amen all right thank you sister uh, angel what are you saying oh well um yeah obviously I, I don't believe in this whole millions and millions of years thing and uh unlike some people on the panel i don't uh so far at least i don't really subscribe to the gap theory either so i'm a pretty young i'm a pretty young earther when it comes to that and um uh you know dinosaurs i've you know, we've talked about this before that some, some of the, the fossil remains, um, you know, and the creatures they concoct out of them are, are probably, you know, all together false. But then I do believe that, I, I mean, I tell my little girl, I tell the, you know, she loves dragons and she loves dinosaurs. And um, I tell her that they are the same thing <laughs> uh, because, uh, you know, I didn't want to tell her you know entirely that dinosaurs aren't real, but I just tell her that dragons are the same thing. And she, she tries to correct me on it. Um, <laughs> because they're depicted differently, but, um, I do believe, uh, that, you know, I think that, I think that what we consider dragons, I mean, I think we at least have, um, evidence from scripture that, that there, there are some, um, what is it? The, uh, the seraphim, the seraphim are, or uh, I believe that the seraphim for sure are, are drag are described as like what we would call dragon like creatures. Um, and, um, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they had manipulated things on earth uh, to uh, to try to create creatures such as that um, here. And that might have, if they had, uh, you know, reptile, like reptile, like terrestrial reptile stock to deal with, um, I could see them creating something very similar to dinosaurs. Um, and, but I don't, I don't think that, uh, <laughs> that anything, you know, the, 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 the picture where we've been painted about, um, and I was in love with dinosaurs when I was a kid. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I, I would fantasize about being able to go back in time to see the dinosaurs. So I know it's a tough pill to swallow. Um, but, um, I, you know, I, I, I think that it's one of the, one of the greatest uh, weapons they have against the Bible, especially when it comes to children because uh, it captures their fancy and their, their imagination. Yep. <laughs> and then that's a big enemy when it comes to so many things, when it comes to actually understanding biblical cosmology and creation, is that people have had their, 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 their fancies tickled and their imagination captivated by these uh, fantastical images that, uh, that the media has provided them. And uh, even though if they were to actually look at scripture and see what scripture depicts about our reality, it's even more fantastical and, yeah. and um, you know, captivating. So that's kind of sad. But, uh, but they're attached to these things. You know, so a lot of people are very, very 
uh, spiritually and emotionally invested in space. And that's the same for dinosaurs. Um, yeah. But um, I, 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 I don't put. It, of course, of course, they could have fabricated the the concept of dinosaurs because all they have to do is present us with these fossil remains and um, and 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 just give it present it to us in a different context than what was commonly understood. You know, for hundreds and hundreds of years, which was that they were dragons. You know, and 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 then that, and I believe that uh, the concept of like dinosaurs being something different than dragons was, is a relatively new phenomenon um, that, that came about uh, what would have been like the 1800s. I think Ben would know more, but um, um, you know, I think that, uh, that, you know, I, I don't know if we can ever have the exact understanding until we, you know, we're face to face with God about exactly what, what uh, you know, was or wasn't here. But I do think that like Lisa said, there's some very, uh, unusual things out there in the ocean um for sure because i mean oh, especially yeah. depending on what model that you that you subscribe to uh some of the the ancient depictions of creation the hebrew cosmological depictions will have the the, the ocean that we you know traverse uh separate from the great deep you know yep. yeah uh, but others will not others will have it being like something that that's continuous um and so I, you know, who knows? Have you guys, <laughs> who knows? Have, you, have you guys seen that video of those people under way deep into the ocean and they found another like, yes, like atmosphere or something? Mm-hmm. Like the, they uh, the firmament the underneath. Yeah. 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 I was like, what? Yeah. I'm going to look at it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to post it in the YouTube, <laughs> into the chat. They're like, like brine what? ponds or something. Like they call oh. it like a, yeah. like a brine heavily salty water or something like yep. that is how they try to explain it but man yep. yeah yeah that's when they there's, eh, there's sulfur huh? volcanoes too down there's sulfur volcanoes down there too they just exude sulfur uh, yeah oh. it's like going well, to the of hell well, let me remind everybody that um einstein is most people say he was one of the most smartest people ever right well he says man doesn't even know one percent of nothing yeah, there is so much that we don't know. Uh, you talk about the oceans, yeah, that is fascinating too. And, and we've only scratched, <laughs> not really scratched the surface. We're going deep, but there's so much we don't know about the oceans. Um, but let me say that, um, the, in case you don't know this, um, the idea of fire breathing or uh, being able to emit fire from you from a body. Um, it still is happening today. Have you ever heard of the bombardier beetle? Yes. Uh, yeah. the bombardier beetle, it shoots fire out of a butt. As what? A, as, a, as a defense, yeah. It's called the bomb bombardier beetle. And now here is something else I just found when I was pulling up the bombardier beetle. Smog. It says it's S-M-A-U-G. Smog breathes fire like a bloated bombardier beetle. <laughs> So there's a smog and there's a bombardier beetle and who knows what else creatures there are that are capable of uh, emitting fire as a weapon. And so the idea of a fire breathing dragon is not just a fairy tale. It's a, it's a legitimate possibility. Uh, and yeah, the um, plus with the, when we look at the drawings on caves uh, where human beings make these drawings of dinosaurs, uh, obviously, for them to draw the dinosaurs, they had to have lived among the dinosaurs and observed them to draw them. Um, you also have the footprints of the dinosaurs and humans embedded into, uh, you know, a, like volcanic rock. Uh, so you can see that humans and dinosaurs existed together. Um, and, and now, they, even from some bones, they found soft tissue. There is soft tissue in a bone. It couldn't be millions of years old. I mean, it has to be very, very recent for it to still have soft tissue. So there's a lot of reasons to think that um, these uh, dinosaur type creatures existed in the not too distant past. All right, uh, let me see. We've uh, the girls answered and I answered. So Crips, how about you? Uh, yeah, uh, I don't believe millions and millions of years, uh, even if, and I, I'm, I'm not saying I b uh, fully believe in gap theory, uh, but I found some, uh, last time the subject came up, 
uh, Sister Lisa actually brought a few things in the, in the way words are used. And the one I always thought of as reconciliation, if, you know, if God's trying to reconcile us uh, to him, it implies that we used to be uh, in a different type of relationship. And I don't think it's just referring to Adam and Eve. So anyway, um, even if gap theory is true, I don't believe it's been millions and millions of years. It's certainly not the amount of time that they tell us uh, as we're talking about scientists and, and, and whatnot. Um, uh, I think they've messed up the whole timeline. I even think that uh, Einstein is probably more right than we think because uh, we're trying to get information from deceitful people that lie for their own gain. So we don't know, honestly, we don't know how much of what we do know about history is even is even correct and true. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I, I do think that the dinosaurs uh, were dragons and things like that. I don't I, I don't believe uh, what they present as all the different dinosaurs. I think they're uh, fictionary. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. uh, but don't believe millions of years. So uh, I need I need to make sure read how the question is phrased though before I say certainly false. I forgot how it was phrased. Um, I got to scroll back up. Okay, here it is. Dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. Uh, certainly false. All right. Brother Cripps, I will give you a, a, a gold star on that one. You got that one right. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. I need all the gold stars I can get. It's been a long time since I've been in accelerated Christian education. I, I, <laughs> I actually have a tab here, and you have quite a few I haven't told you about, but eventually you're going to get your evaluation. Oh, well, awesome. And you'll see all the gold stars you've been accumulating. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Did I tell you, Crips, that that's what I'm doing with the curriculum I got uh, my kids? I uh, got no, the but, AC. No, you didn't. But I, I was surprised to know that Sister Lisa knows exactly we had. A yeah, that's why I did it was because oh, both uh, of you took it. Yes. I was just about to ask you, Sister Angel, are your children in, enjoying their gold stars? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and that's what I, I just think is so. That was such a god, like a god moment when I found out both of you guys just used that curriculum when you were kids, and I had been struggling to find one. So, um, but it, it's uh, it's really funny. But uh, uh, anyway, sorry. <laughs> yes, I, no. I, real quick, I really am grateful to God for that experience in my life. It was one of the most joyous. Looking back. As yeah. I told y'all the whole story, how I didn't want to go and I was bummed out. But but after having lived it, I am I am grateful to God for that education through ACE. It was it was yeah. the best ever. Uh, and, the, and the cool thing about that system was when you had your star chart and if you did uh, two, you took two tests in the same week, the same subject, then you got that double star thing going, which I always liked. You get a star on top of a star in the same subject, two, two tests in one week. Uh, Crips just wants us to think he always got double stars. No, not always, but history was my favorite. Uh, I didn't understand back then that it was probably I was I was regurgitating and memorizing dates and times for lies. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I had lots of history. Uh, the green stars, the, all the stars were colorful. Oh, they stole that then because my school did that too. We had the star charts, but I don't think we had accelerated Christian education. So it's interesting. I didn't know they were the originators. Oh, I don't know. I have no idea if they originated or not, really. Yeah, yeah well, you was a, I mean, I, 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 I hmm, that's a good thing to look into, yeah. But I know it's a pretty uh, um, iconic, uh, ed, like, you know, educational system. Oh, um, sure. I'm really liking it. Let's, so. let's, uh, let's give Ben a chance to answer the question. Uh, with regard to the uh, gap theory, uh, I'm undecided on that. I've seen evidence. Um, I, I, I studied it on a cursory level and I haven't dug into it yet, but it's one of the things on my list. But I think, Crips, you said reconcile, though. The word that I think I, I hear a lot of uh, gap three proponents use replenish. is replenish. Replenish, yes. Yeah. Replenish. Uh, that's the emphasis. There's also other things, too, but that's one of the big ones. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I don't. I absolutely uh, reject the millions of years. Um, and uh, again, I think there's, there's tons of evidence uh, that the Earth is not millions of years. It cannot be. Right. Um, uh, deep time is a deception. Um, again, anything that goes back and you can't go out and verify yourself, it's wrought with the deception. Yep. And uh, there's all kinds of evidence, of, you know, the, just the age of diamonds and, and things like that. Uh, 
they can uh there's a uh christian uh the christian ministries uh, have gotten together and they had this thing called um uh the divide this method i forgot what it's called now it's a, it's a uh it's a acronym um i'll think of it uh um, liar, liar pants on fire no, no, no. They have a method that, that, that but they, they prove they have a lot of things where they actually can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt. And these are peer reviewed uh, p- papers that they publish in secular sources that they secular sources can't refute. Um, but um, it's, oh, it's called RATE, R A T E. And it stands for something I can't remember now, but it's a method they have. They have all kinds of evidence that they can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that it cannot be millions of years old. Um, and, and secular science can't refute it, just, just kind of ignore it. Um, but anyway, uh, dinosaurs. Yeah, there's all kinds of fresh uh, or uh, uh, un, you know uh, soft tissue being discovered. Um, Mary Schweitzer was one of the first ones to discover it. But after then, uh, once they discovered it once, they realized, oh, we should be looking for this. And now that now that they're looking for it, it's I think it's pretty much the norm now in all fossils because they weren't looking before. Uh, there's all kinds of evidence where people would say uh, accounts where people say they they will taking fossils off the site and they'll break in half and they can smell. They can still smell the, the contents of it. Um, pigments are preserved. I mean, it's, it's impossible that it could be preserved for that long. They come with all kinds of uh, fanciful theories that make no sense at all, that even on the surface don't make any sense. So they say things like iron can preserve blood for that long. Well, you don't see anyone, uh, you know, you don't see people, uh, you know, formaldehyde. Why, why, that, why not just put uh, iron in, in things to keep them uh, preserved? You know, they have formaldehyde for that reason. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense, and they can't uh, reproduce it. Um, and I, there's all kinds of historical accounts as well. Uh, I, I have a lot of books by this guy named Bill Cooper. A lot of his books are uh, online for free. It's a different Bill Cooper than what you guys are probably thinking of. He's a creation scientist. Um, but he writes a lot of no-nonsense, really entertaining uh, books that are just they're really fun to read. And he's, he's got a great sense of humor. Um, and he, he wrote one book called After the Flood. He kind of recounts all the history of the, the genealogies uh, it, using ancient documents to prove that these people, that uh, the ancient flood stories in ancient history, way, way, way back on, on different islands and that are, that are completely disconnected. People that have, uh, uh, they, they, they trace their history back to uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. I mean, it, it's just so interesting. And one, he has some chapters on, Dinosaur accounts, and there's other accounts too, but like Marco Polo talked about encountering dinosaurs, uh, Tacitus, Herodotus, all these ancient historians talk about these things. Um, I mean, it's it just oh, the ancient record is is filled with these accounts of encountering uh, these dragons, as, as you guys rightly called them. Uh, one thing though, uh, and and, and uh, Jen, you touched on this, and I believe this as well. I think a lot of them are absolute fabrications. One for, in particular. Oh, actually, Luke, you said smog. I think smog is the name of the dragon. Smog. In the Hobbit. It's smog. 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 I okay. always say smog. People kept correcting me. Smog. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So he he's the he's the uh, <laughs> drag the fictional dragon in the Hobbit. However, if you were to take a picture of if you picture smog or how you ever say it, yeah, that was good. good. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. All right. uh, if you were to take and, and picture his skull, what it would look like. Um, What's interesting is that if you were to take that skull, no dinosaur that you could really think of that would really have that kind of skull, I think, that would match that exactly. However, recently, somewhat recently, Bill Gates, of all people, and that should raise alarm bells right there, he uh, was involved in the discovery of a dinosaur they call it Draco Rex. And uh, Draco Rex, I think, you know, a, a dragon, I mean, dragon Satanism. And But this skull looks exactly like it would be uh, like a, like a, a, a fictional um dinosaur like smog <laughs> and uh and so you should look at it look at draco rex as a skull it looks completely fake um it just looks so like fantastical like just like in the old medieval uh depictions of dragons stuff like that but yeah it does those, yeah a lot of those dragons so i think again i think they're they're fake but um a lot of the dinosaur uh depictions are fake but there's all kinds of evidence um i've studied this really this is one of the first things i went deep on but this is about 12 years ago, so I haven't looked at it in a long time. But if anyone has any uh, interest in that, uh, there's a ton of evidence for uh, ancient dinosaurs and t- pterodactyls and pteranodons and things like that, flying lizards and things like that. Oh, what's also interesting, too, is, you know, the uh, Aztecs, I think it was, they they worshipped uh, an entity called Quetzalcoatl, which was a, they think they called it, it was a plumed serpent. And by plumed, it was feathered. Yeah. Uh, and again, I think it's it's Satan in disguise, essentially. Um 
And if you think about it, what, 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 what do we hear about dinosaurs now? Oh, a lot of them had feathers because they were evolving uh, into birds. Um, and I think, I think that's no uh, coincidence either. So um, interesting there. Awesome. That's all I had. Uh, I'll read the comments. Uh, let me pull those up here. Let me make a comment about Chris Annie first here. She said uh, a very good point that's made. Um, Chris Annie L wrote, gap theory is what happens when people try to reconcile the word of God with the knowledge of men. They don't mix. I think that's well, exactly, I exactly the right conclusion she came to. Well, again, I wouldn't. I don't hold to men's theories whatsoever about deep time. I, the only reason I said anything about gap theory is the people. I, I've read some arguments that seemed like okay, this is worth investigating. I, uh, I'm not. I'm not uh, convinced of one way or another. But it wouldn't be based on uh, man's word or deep time or try to fit the the the, wor the world's narrative into the Bible's narrative. That's that's something I would absolutely not do, and that would not be. Uh, I think that is maybe a motivation for some people. Uh, but I don't, think, I don't think she was referring to you directly. No, no, I know, I know. I'm just saying that 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 that's probably true. Uh, why it came about, maybe. Uh, but there is some scriptural evidence that seems that might support it. But again, I haven't explored it thoroughly. Um, with regards to the comments, again, a lot of spam. One person wrote a Genesis six, and that's all. I, that's the only comment that was pertinent to this discussion. All right. Yeah, you had an awful lot of buildup about these comments, and now you really let us down. Well, that's the that's <laughs> take that to the <laughs> chat. I was expecting a lot of comments and some great insights. There, you, there usually was, and I've skipped them, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next question then. Okay, the next question is this is mine, so I'll go last. And this is just a, a, a curiosity. I don't, I don't have a definite answer. But the question is, true or false, Nimrod was the world ruler at the construction of the Tower of Babel. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. And let's let Sister Lisa go first on this one. Okay. All right. Sure. Drop it on me. But um, repeat it <laughs> one more time, please. Okay, true or false, Nimrod was the world world ruler at the construction of the Tower of Babel. Sister Lisa, it's a, it's a great privilege and blessing to be able to go first. Mm -hmm. Keep telling me that. I'll try to remember it. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I don't know about world ruler. I don't know how much of the world was being ruled at that point. Right. You know, it wasn't like Rome or, you know, some of these other empires, but uh you know i'll say the known world what they knew yes but so based on that i'll say true um it, but leaning i'll say leaning true like, like not an emphatic true oh did you guys expect me to elaborate more than that no <laughs> we're waiting for uh, it, uh, <laughs> it, 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 it that's it, that's it that's okay yeah all that's right. that's all i really had to say on that uh, okay how about sister angel Sorry, my little one's uh, throwing a fit right now. Um, so I, I'm going to kind of just play it safe here because that, that has always been my impression that at least, um, uh, you know, from uh, uh, the known world, like what Lisa said, that, I, you know, my impression was that he was, uh, you know, was the, was the guy. Um, I know that he had done something pretty significant because so many of these families that uh, trace their lineage back so very far and, uh, you know, um, uh, I, you know, I believe we're privy to a lot of accurate historical knowledge that they kind of deceive us about. Um, they they worship him. I mean, there's even a what was it a, one of them? One of the families was it Rockefellers? There's a, they named their kid after you know they named their children after him. One of them's like Nimrod. What was it? Rock, it might have been Rockefeller or Rothschild. I'm not sure which one. But yeah. um, but you know he's a he's a, a type and shadow in a lot of ways and a and a you know. A symbol of um, of something pretty significant to these people. So uh, I had that's what, what my impression was. I thought that that's why they uh, looked, looked upon it this way. So I'll just go ahead and say the true because I'm curious to hear what Ben has to say. <laughs> Aren't there some people that think Nimrod's going to be the Antichrist? 
like yeah. they found right. his body or something. Mm-hmm. Right, like, yeah, some reincarnation of him. Or something. Yeah. yeah. All right, there you go. There's my girl. <laughs> Are you sure that wasn't you, Angel? <laughs> oh, my mini me. She's my mini me, Gracie. But then. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so she wants another cup. Here, I'm <laughs> off to <on a> mute. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Uh, so Jen, you made a comment. You want to elaborate more? Um. Yeah, I just I it made me think of uh, uh some rabbit holes I went down with the the Antichrist theory with Nimrod, but um pertaining to the question, Nimrod was ruler world ruler at Babel. I don't know a whole lot about Nimrod, so I'm going to say leaning true, and I wish I had more to say on this particular topic, but I don't, and I am intently listening to all of your answers because I'm very interested (laughs) to hear what you guys have to say. (laughs) Okay. All right. Thanks. All right, Brother Chris. Uh, I put undecided. I have no idea. I I mean, I, uh, I know he... He was in charge of the whole Babel project, and uh, not what they called it, but that's what ended up being called. Uh, and uh, he's uh, uh, worshipped. Uh, I certainly were certainly aware of that. That um, uh, Luciferians are somehow expecting some kind of reincarnation of him, or the spirit of him, or whatever. Uh, so he was a big dude uh, in the time. Uh, so, but I don't know. Uh, I, I don't. I don't think we can know like what parts of the world. I, I don't even know how how many people lived in the world at that time. What was what was the world population when Nimrod was there, and w- was his influence so far reaching that he controlled the whole world? I I, I doubt it. Uh, so I there's just not enough information for me to answer anything but undecided. Um, and then the one other thing I'll say is naming your kid Nimrod doesn't sound good. When I when I was growing up, it was a derogatory <laughs> term. It sure was. Nimrod. Oh, you're such a Nimrod. Nimrod. That's, right. it, that's derogatory. So I, I wouldn't name my kid Nimrod for many reasons. And the Green the Green Day album. I know. I know. That's why. That's why I knew it had to be a sub, of such uh, significance to them, uh, because knowing what the word is known as locally, it's like it was still worth naming. Yeah. Um, their kid that you know yeah yeah no i think i think you're right there's probably some kind of significance to it but it doesn't mean it's a, a good significance for sure yeah yeah well no, it's he, a bad he, one. Is a, he is a foreshadow or an archetype of the antichrist so yeah. you know the, there's a lot of symbology around him that the antichrist will actually either embody or mirror or bring about as well you know when the lord confounded the languages there um, with the whole internet of things, that is going away. I mean, now you they have these little handheld translators where you can talk what you say into the translator, and then within just a few seconds, whatever yep. the language is, <laughs> that person can know what you're saying. And, yep. I mean, so that barrier that has kept man separated is coming down. So just imagine once once they release, and they pro- they already have it, where they can literally do it in real time. You know how they have those voice changers? Well, that's the yep. technology that's instantly changing your voice as you speak. So then theoretically, they should be able to instantly translate what you say as you speak. And I'm sure they already have it. So once they introduce it, then that whole barrier comes down. Yep. Just, just throwing that out there. <laughs> no, that's a great point. You're absolutely right. And, and, they they want that. Okay, so we all know this from the Tower of Babel. You know, they 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 were even concerned that God would uh, do something to uh, not only stop them but scatter them all over the face of the earth. They wanted to make a name for themselves. Well, that hasn't changed. They still want to make a name for their, their, themselves. Uh, they want to uh, make it one world, one ruler, one uh, economy, all that stuff. This isn't just misinterpretation of Scripture. That's what they want. I mean, they've made it very clear. Uh, especially recently with the whole virus thing, you know, all the commercials and the, the, we're all in this together and all that. Uh, so yeah, there's, they, they, they want that again. And that's a good point. Uh, sister Lisa, I thought that was uh, pretty astute. The, um, the yeah, that whole, was fantastic. Uh, translation, uh, and being able to understand everyone. Uh, yeah, that very well could, could tie into, um, 
uh, overwriting what God did or trying to, I'm not saying they can, but trying to overwrite what was done uh, all those years ago at the Tower of Babel when they were, were trying to, again, make a name for themselves and believing Satan's original lie that they can be as gods. They, I mean, the Luciferians uh, believe that, you know, they're little G gods. Um, and that's uh, the lie Lucifer uh, told, is telling them. Uh, and he hasn't changed his tune since the beginning. Still, still saying it. <coughs> I was uh, trying to find some information on it. Uh, to, so I could uh, see if I could say certainly, but I, uh, there's not enough to for me to say certainly uh, true. But uh, I, I I put down leaning true because the the information we do have is that apparently Nimrod is the leader, and the whole world is condensed in one spot, and God wants them to spread across the world, and. Uh, so he confounds their language, but so it, it seems that if I'm understanding the, the account correctly, the, the population of the world was all condensed and he was the leader. So I think you have to connect the, the, the dots and say he was the, the ruler of the world at that time. Mm. Okay. Um, who has an answer there? Ben? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. By the way, Lisa, yes. Uh, there is real time, uh, uh, oh. not just the text, not, not just voice to text, but real time voice, like computer voice to translation. Microsoft is like the forefront of it. If you want to check that out, I uh, just found it, Ben. I was <laughs> just poking around, and that's exactly what I came up with is the, the Microsoft Translator Live feature is the first step towards a personal, universal translator and translator's overall goal of breaking the language barrier. <laughs> it's yeah. a multi-device, multi-language, in-person translation feature available in the Microsoft Translator apps. Yep, it, it's freakishly good. Like uh, Microsoft Teams, for example, you can have a conference call with someone in Japanese. You say something, it says it back to them. Uh, both in text and voice, and they understand it. I mean, it's it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> um, yeah, but now now let me ask you a question. When when they speak, it has to. Is there a delay in waiting for it to be translated, or does it do like I'm perceiving they will eventually release, which is just like I'm talking to you right now. If there was a voice changer on that changed my voice to male, it does it instantly. That it will actually, literally, as you speak the word, translate it right then i'm not talking about any delay like you're well, I, actually speaking it in that language well i think there's a delay only because sometimes you know a word for word translation is not the most in intuitive you have to look at the whole sentence before you can really say okay i gotta restructure this because you say words in different order or you know, your verbs become become for the noun or i don't know you know you know the, the different mm -hmm. syntax so I, there is a delay but i don't i think it's just because you know it doesn't because it has to figure out, you know, how to say it most intuitively, but it could be real time. Like you, you could say a word, I'm, I, you know, computers are fast enough where they can, I say the word interesting and it says, you know, whatever the word is in Japanese. Right. Because listen, if, if they can, if you think about it, how do you instantly change? If I'm female, my voice to male, as I'm speaking with no delay, if they can do that, they can do the same thing with, with language. Mm-hmm. This yeah, my so, just my, you know, take on it. I I already see it coming. Yeah. So, so go ahead. Um, uh, Ben, I don't know if you answered the question. Though. Yeah, I was about to. Um, so, uh, by the way, if you guys have, you know, I know a lot of these questions are people. So, if you have any ideas, if you're running dry on ideas for questions, just start reading the Bible as I just, you know, questions start coming flowing out. And this is one that I, I came up recently just as I was reading because I thought it could be prophetically significant. Um, be, and I, I believe it is, but, um, and I wanted to know, you know, okay, okay, well, people say all the time, oh yeah, Nimrod was forcing a rebellion to cause man to build the tower. So basically he was, he was kind of a dictator forcing everyone to work, you know, build a city and uh, build this tower. And I started reading the count very carefully and I don't think that's the case. Um, not, not, you know, again, not a huge deal, but it could be prophetically significant. So 
basically the the the, the count of Nimrod is is in Genesis ten and eleven, two very short chapters, so it's not long to go long to go on. But basically, Genesis ten details the different family groups and their languages as the result of the judgment of Babel. But you don't hear about the actual judgment until Genesis eleven, the chapter after it. So it's kind of weird. Uh, and, and I see that a lot in Genesis where you see one account, like Genesis one chapter one is kind of the, the overview. And then the next chapter kind of zooms in on, on a particular aspect of that creation account. So Genesis does that a lot. And I think you see that in Genesis 10, where it talks about the different family groups and their languages at, after they spread out after the scattering judgment of Genesis 11, that was detailed in Genesis 11. Um, and, uh, and what we read in Genesis 10, by the way, so uh, Genesis 10, again, is the is the account after the after the judgment. And it says Cush began Nimrod. He began to be to be he began to be a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty, mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore, it is said, like Nimrod, the might the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Eric, Akkad and Kalna in the land of Shinar. From that land, he went to Assyria and they went to Nineveh, Rehoboth, etc. So, what's interesting though, so that 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 account that talks about he began began to be a mighty hunter, and his kingdom uh, his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalna. And I do know there's a they say I believe this is true that when the Bible lists a city or a person first, it's that person's the biggest or the most significant. So Babel was the so most significant, but however. Again, like Josephus will say things like, um, oh, yeah, he caused an aff- Nimrod gathered all men together as an affront to God to cause force a rebellion and force them to make a city. But again, if you read the account in Genesis, it doesn't say that at all. In fact, I think that's a Jewish fable, in, which Paul tells us to be a warn us against. Um, and if you read the account carefully, it says you know, it's not that people uh, were uh, in rebellion building the tower because it says in Genesis 11. This is this is before the uh, the scattering. It says, then they. This is they, not that you know, not Nimrod dictating to them. This is nothing about Nimrod here. It says, then they said to one another, "Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly." They had brick for stone. They had asphalt for mortar. And they said, "Come, let us build a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens, and make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered over the face of the whole earth." Uh, and because again, Genesis eleven is the chronological account after the judgment, and Genesis 10 is the result of that judgment, I believe, uh, basically, Nim- the people built the tower. Nimrod was even on the scene yet, probably, I'm thinking. Uh, again, just how I'm reading the account. So they, they, they built the city first, um, but then after the scattering, then I believe Nimrod, at some point in definite time after that, he stepped in from the ashes of that essentially, and then took over. And then uh, he was kind of the first type antichrist, in which he uh, basically had to use the first kingdom, uh, you know, king essentially, earthly king almost. Um, again, that could be signi- pr- prophetically significant because we may be all looking for an antichrist to come on the scene and, and tell us, tell everyone to build the city or whatever, where the building of the city and the tower. Uh, which I believe is going to something of that effect is going to a type of that's going to happen in the future, uh, in the end times. I, I it may, the man of sin might not be on the scene until after, uh, that is already complete by, by man. You know, so I thought that was interesting. Again, it's counter to what what a lot of people assume, which I what I assumed, and I probably didn't make a good case here. You have to read the account for yourself, but if you read it carefully, I, I don't think it can be said that uh, Nimrod himself was you know, the cause of the building of the city and the tower. I think he took a- a- over after the ashes of it, essentially. Okay, ready for the next question? Uh, let, me, let me see if there's any uh, comments. Yeah, no, someone playing games again. But I wish you guys would make some comments. Surely you have some. Uh, I'll be ready for the next question. Yeah. Okay. I think everyone will like this one. Um, true or false, Christians should make preparations for future crises. Hmm. Hmm. Anybody eager? 
I'll I'll say that uh, I've been very back and forth on this particular topic. Um, there's been times that I'm like, okay, we're going to get prepared. <laughs> but a lot of times it's, it's fueled by fear. And with God, we don't have a spirit of fear. And I, I then get into thinking about like the end times. So we don't know when that's going to be. Um, no man can tell, but if I'm reliant on God, I'm going to be fully reliant on him letting me know if I need to be prepared or not, because we might be taken out of here. Um, we may be here during like uh, the earlier parts of the tribulation. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen and who knows what God is going to call us to do during that time. Um, he may he may have us being. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not sacrificed, but martyred. We just don't know. I don't know. So I've, I don't know about you guys, but I've been very back and forth on this particular topic. Um, but I definitely don't live in a place of fear now. I have a peace and just knowing that God's going to let me know if he wants me to prepare. So that's where I'm at. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Brother Cripps, you and I said, hmm. In her- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Um, well, I'm ready to go, but Cripps, are you are you anxious to go next? Oh no, go ahead, go ahead. All right. Um, well, if we study Proverbs, uh, this is how we get wisdom. Uh, if you were actually able to adopt and apply all of the principles in Proverbs, uh, I think your life would be better off. Uh, and it does talk about planning and being responsible and uh, and self reliant, all these things. But um, uh, and that it seems to um, be contrary to what Jesus told us, though. Uh, Jesus said, don't worry about things. Uh, and he, he gave us also a story about um, a man that uh, filled up his barn, and then uh, his yeah. life was taken that very night. I mean, you know, yeah, he, he really was prepared that his life was taken. And I think that story is to, to tell us that uh, um, the, the planning, all those things that we do to plan and for the future, uh, the future's not promised. So maybe the, it'd be planning is, is over, over, overrated. Uh, and also, if you, ha- if you do make plans, uh, is it an indication of lack of faith? As Jesus said that, hey, uh, uh, if you worry about something, it, you really you don't have faith if you're worrying. Uh, just trust that God's going to provide all your needs. Um, so I'm a, I would say leading uh, false then that uh, um, maybe it's best for us to not get all caught up in doing all these preparations like like you're watching the the documentaries about the preppers and stuff. That's really <laughs> interesting what they're do, but uh, I, I've never really uh, I, I've been tempted, I guess, but I've never t- gone taken one step towards preparing uh i I just all right crips what do you say well i have a short story that my my grandpa uh leo and he's with the lord now but uh they lived in michigan um my entire life his entire life he was lived in the same city pretty much the whole time small town and when I he he started uh, teaching me how to drive on ice and snow uh, when I was probably like twelve years old. Before that, he taught me how to dr- uh, drive tractors and and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, when he taught me how to drive, he opened up the trunk, and in the back of the trunk was a few uh, things to prepare for in case I slid off the road into a ditch or car wouldn't start. Things like that. It was things like a uh, sand and a shovel and gloves and and stuff like that. Um, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with preparing for something to happen, but it depends on uh, how much effort you put into it and and why you're doing it. Um, if we can prepare for certain things, like I don't think it's it's wrong to have some extra batteries on hand in case the power goes out or candles or um, a few things. Uh, if you live in an uh, a uh, house with the second second story. It's good to have a, a emergency escape ladder in case there's a fire and you can't get downstairs. You you can scale the outside of the house. Nothing wrong with that at all. 
Um, I think, uh, I, as you were saying, Brother Luke, you watch some of these shows, the preppers and stuff. It's just fascinating to me, some of the lengths that the, the people go to. Um, and I also liked your point about, uh, I was thinking that very same thing. Now, I, I think the point of that story is, you know, he was uh, uh, storing up things and, and, and uh, it was his attitude, I think, that God had an issue with. But I also agree that there's something in that about preparing and whether we're trusting God or not. Um, he says not to, uh, as Jen said, you know, we don't have the spirit of fear. He doesn't want us to fear. He wants us to count on him. Give us this day our daily bread. Doesn't say give us this day the, or give, give us today the next full year of everything that I need. <laughs> um, no, uh, you know, I think uh, scripture um, in, in a lot of places it tells us that we're supposed to rely on God and he'll, he'll provide for our needs according to his riches and glory. And um, that is spiritual. Of course, if someone says, well, that's spiritual, of course it's spiritual. Um, but uh, I, I do believe he provides uh, for our needs as well. Um, and for what scripture talks about as far as the end times, I don't think anyone can prepare for what's coming if we're going to be here. Um you know, a lot of people think we're going to take it out of here. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's very possible. We'll, we'll see if, when it happens, it's going to happen. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. Um, but with the, with the evil in the world and the things that the Bible talks about, uh, even leading up to, uh, his judgment of the world. I mean, that's going to be terrible. We're not going to be here for that. I don't believe, but, uh, for, for some of the growing pains and all that. There are some terrible things that are going to happen. I don't know how a person could fully prepare. Um, so it seems uh, fruitless to me. Hmm. Okay. All right. Um, Sister Angel. Can you give me just a second and come to me like before Ben, because my now my littlest baby woke up and I'm just getting her changed oh. to put in bed real quick. Sure, Sorry, sure. I don't want to bother you. Sister, Sister Lisa, are you ready? Yeah, I lost the question. I was um, reading something else related to something we said a little bit earlier. Um, I heard you guys. I heard everything you guys said. I just need to. Okay. Oh, Christians should make preparations for the future, for future crisis. Um, you know, I don't think it's unwise if you, you know, it's like this. If you saw, if you looked outside, you talk about if you look and you saw the sky is red and lowery, you, you make adjustments because you see <laughs> how the sky is going. Like if I looked up and I said, oh, it looks like rain. I think I'll take my umbrella. I think that's wisdom. I'm not saying that we shouldn't prepare. How far into the future? I think you have to be led to the Lord for that because as I always, always said, if you can get you a storehouse and, <laughs> and if a tornado comes or an earthquake or something, everything collapses on it, then what? You still going to have to trust the Lord, no matter how it goes. We trust the Lord before a crisis, during a crisis, and after a crisis. How much preparing you think you should do, I think you should seek the Lord about. I don't know. There's people going and buying <laughs> and land and you know building cabins and doing all this stuff, and I'm like, just like they knew where you lived before you bought that land, they know where you live now. So, I mean, we're going to have to trust the Lord regardless of what's going on. And I don't care what you do. If it's your time to go, then it's your time to, to go. But can't nobody take you out of here before the Lord say it's time for you to go. So uh, I don't I really don't worry about it too much. I do have some things just in case we do have to weather the storm. I prepared myself by training myself for many years now that fasting is not starving. So if you have to go a few days without food, you're not going to die. <laughs> I know about dry fasting too. Um, I've also uh, looked into the whole, you know, in a survival situation, if you didn't have any water, whether or not you could drink your own urine and all that stuff to survive. So, you know, I mean, I think you should have knowledge of things. I mean, what if you're, your car broke down and you were in the middle of nowhere and you couldn't get a cell phone. I think you should know some things. I don't think that's unwise, yeah. but I'm not like, Oh my God, we're all going to die. No, I'm, I'm never going to go there. That, that I don't have that trouble in my spirit, even with all this craziness going on that I don't have a spirit of fear. I know that's not of the Lord. If that tries to come upon you, you should rebuke it in Jesus name because fear has torment. You cannot think straight if you're afraid. So, you know, things like that. But, 
you know, panicking and running out and buying $10,000 worth of <laughs> 30 years survival suit food. If Y2K didn't teach y'all that maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe we should not uh, be so concerned. I'm not saying, cause we do see a lot of craziness going on. We haven't seen before, but you could say that too about Y2K. Right. I mean, they had us convinced that, you know, this was it. This was the end. <laughs> the uh, the catastrophe was coming. And yet here we are 20 years later. That's why I'm saying if the Lord say not yet there, I don't care what they're doing. If yep. the Lord says not yet, it ain't happening. That's yep. why it's just more important to be in tune with him and mm -hmm. being led by yes. him because he's going to show you and prepare you and have you mentally prepared for whatever's going to come. So yeah. Yeah, I, I just I just don't worry about such things. And I don't have no alarm in my spirit, no matter what they're reporting on the news. I don't have an alarm in my spirit about any of this. It's like, even so, come Lord Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Nice. Amen. Amen. Okay, I forgot where we were uh, as far as whose turn it is. Uh, Angel, you wanted to, to wait. Or is it your turn now, Angel? Um, I am just I'm just walking the baby into the bed real quick right now, and so um, um, hold on, I can just talk and see if she'll like. And I, I can go first. It doesn't really matter when uh, I go. Uh, uh, yeah, Ben, how about you do that? Yeah, uh, that'll, that'll okay. work. I'll say okay. Oh, give 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 the baby the microphone. She sounds like she's ready to talk anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to talk, little girl? Oh, now she's staring quietly at the phone. She's too interested. <laughs> in it. My oh. baby, she. I should turn. I, <laughs> here, hold on, hold on. Oh, you're not seeing, not seeing me, but you can see the. Just for fun, let's see if I can turn Hello? the. All right, are we seeing the baby? Oh, nice. <laughs> there she is. Wait, I, am I on? Yeah, you got, can you guys yeah, see this? Adorable. There's a little baby for everybody. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank beautiful. you. That's, that's Amelia. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Picture to Gerber. Pay for her picture. Yeah, she's like a little girl. Actually, a bunch of little blonde Gerber babies. Thanks to Joel, he got the. A blonde Jane went out. I never thought it would happen with my hair so dark. But um, all right, I'm gonna go set her down now. I'm gonna go put before I wake her up too much. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Ben, if you want to go, and then I will answer last for for this round. Mm -hmm. Say bye. Okay, very cute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there you go, Ben. I bought you some time. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Okay, a couple of things. Uh, Luke, that parable you mentioned, I, I thought of that too at first, but then I started thinking about it. That parable is about the storehouse of storing his goods. It's not a, a really a parable about preparation. It's about uh, greediness and hoarding, really, because this guy said, oh, I have so many crops, I'm going to tear down what I have, you know, and then build up even more greater storehouses. So it's almost being reckless with, with what you have. And he says, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build big, greater barns and lay up even more goods and and uh, have taken basically set set the rest of my days are gonna be easy. I'll eat, drink, be merry. And God said to him, to him uh, tonight your your life's required of you, and it, it that it will be for everyone who who lays up treasure for himself, but is rich not rich towards God. So um, again, I think that's more more a picture of hoarding. And you know the guy had so many good crops, he, he didn't was interested in helping out anyone else or serving anyone else who might have a need. Uh, he was more about just concerned about himself and not uh, no concern with uh, of God or his fellow man. Um, but yeah, I, I I agree with all you guys, all your answers. I agree that it makes sense to be practical and um, you know not if you're trusting in your uh, if you're you know if you're trusting in your riches or anything you, you, your preparations to save you in in a crisis um, that can be dangerous. But being uh, prepared, uh, I don't think I don't think there's anything wrong with with that at all. In fact. You know, there's I even once while you hear about people, well, they won't take their infant to the doctor because they say, oh, God's going to heal them. Well, to me, that's putting God to the test because um, that's something, that any, you know, that's something that man can handle. It, God gets the glory uh, and does miraculous things when only he can do it. It's, he's in the business of getting glory for himself and not sharing glory with other people. And so, you know, if a doctor can heal a, a young child of a sickness easily with like a single shot or whatever, a penicillin or whatever, um, 
you know, people, I, I, I see those stories. And I kind of apply that lesson here too, is that, um, you know, if, if we could do basic stuff to be basically prepared, um, you know, we're not putting God to the test, you know, um, you know, I, I could go, uh, try to walk, walk in a volcano, but, uh, that's not going to, uh, you know, it, it put, put God to the test, but I don't think I'm going to be too successful with that. Um, so I like I liked everyone's answer so far. And hopefully I gave Angel enough time. Well, Ben, you might be successful at turning yourself into barbecue, but yeah, I, I would, <laughs> I would be, I would be inclined to agree with you on that for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah so you gave me enough time, except my, I'm uh, sorry. I let Joel go to sleep tonight because he wasn't feeling good. And so my little, uh, my little two-year-old is terrorizing me, chasing me around the house. But um, so I, I have struggled with this question, having so many kids. Um, there. And um, and uh, trying to figure out like what level of uh, worry is appropriate, even though we know God tells us not to worry, not for the morrow, because um, you know it will, uh, you know, basically there'll be enough problems in the day uh in, in you know in the day that you know in the present not not to worry about the future and i i you know and i i try to follow that um as closely as i can although it is in my nature to worry i will say that we do have some um we have quite a bit of preparations that not so much that we made but that uh uh, uh joel's uh, uh former boss and uh good friend daniel has been uh prepping for like the past decade at least. So he, and he had to move. So he had a whole lot of stuff that he had to give us, you know, canned goods and, and all kinds of like canned butter and stuff like that. So th this is the kind of um, thing that I think God will do uh, because we hadn't actually been focused enough to really, even though we have, <laughs> we have land and we moved out to the country ostensibly in part so that we could do things like this and provide these kind of things for ourselves if the need you know if need be we have well water and stuff although the well runs on electricity which is kind of defeats the purpose and i need to figure out a way around that that's really annoying um <laughs> doesn't make me feel very good but um um you know we didn't actually uh prepare i have prayed about it a lot that god would tell us to do it when it comes to this issue and um you know because i don't i i don't see Unless you just do it very casually because you can, I don't see how prepping for like that, like what we call a prepper, that you're either doing one of two things. You're actually living in fear or you're being greedy in a lot of ways. So it's just kind of, it's kind of hard to get around that unless you do it very casually where you set back, you know, here and there. But, you know, making a lot of people spend a lot of money doing this. Like they'll buy the MREs, which are quite expensive, uh, you know, at least – if you have a family, afford it to, to feed and all of that stuff. Um, and, um, and uh, you know, if you have that kind of disposable income, it is hard to imagine. Gracie, Gracie. Yeah, go in there. Go in there. Mommy's on the phone. Um, um, it's hard to imagine. See, she'll start crying. It's, no matter how gently I tell her, no, she'll start crying. Um, um, it's hard to imagine that you're not kind of foregoing the opportunity to give or to do something um, perhaps more beneficial than, uh, preparing for a disaster in the future that you fear God will not see you through. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, Cause it can be pretty excessive. So I think that, you know, everything within moderation. Um, but um, if you find yourself doing it out of an obsessive or a compulsive spirit or a fearful spirit, I think that that should tell you everything you need to know about what you should be doing. But in my case, because I do think that God answers prayer and that God, um, and that, God will, will, will make a way, you know, we ended up getting all of these preparations that we didn't actually make for ourselves um, that Daniel had to give us. And you see what I'm saying? So we didn't actually take anything out of our pocket. It was just, uh, it was just a gift from God the, the way I see it. Um, and, uh, you know, and I trust that in a situation, in a pinch, if it's will, if the time should come where you need food, I think God can do that very same thing. You know, for those who trust him, I, I believe that God will will make a miracle happen. So that's why I try not to operate in that assumption that I'm going to be, you know, they talk, a lot of these people that talk about a food crisis and a food shortage and a, they're, they actually are either um, selling these food buckets uh, uh, on the low where they get a commission <laughs> only, like, and it operates off a of commission. Those food buckets, just so you guys know, that, that those people are commission only on YouTube and stuff. If you see them um, selling these uh, 
to these food buckets, they don't they they only get commissions, so they have to gin up fear in order to make a profit. Um, yep. But then, yeah, and and the same with a lot of these people that will talk about silver and gold and all that stuff. They will have uh, stock, you know, invested in in these things or crypto to where it benefits them if more people buy. Mm -hmm. um, and then greed. <laughs> really yeah yeah that yeah so 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 always always be mindful of that because i've seen a video circulating recently where this this pastor who appears to have a, a false you know workspace gospel by the way but he's sharing these visions he's having for 2020 of 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 food lines you know like of bread lines and um and he came out and said that you know there was going to be a coin shortage and everybody's like, oh, there was a coin shortage. And I'm not even, I'm pretty sure he, it had already happened by the time he shared that particular quote unquote vision um, that there was already a coin shortage. And he was saying that he saw that in a dream previously. But either way, now he's predicting all of this food line or bread line stuff, food shortage stuff, and um, all kinds of terrible things and whatever. And you don't know what stock he holds and what, <laughs> but his stuff has been circulating a lot. And I've noticed some of the people that show it the most are people who also have food bucket uh, programs to where if you click on, they have an affiliate link to where, you know, if you buy these food buckets from them, they get a big commission. And it so happens that they'll share this pastor who's having these visions of uh, food shortages and stuff. So always be wary of that because um, I do think it preys on our fear and, um, um, I would prefer to operate in faith uh, and, and maybe not have very much planned for the future than I would uh, to, to, to hoard uh, for the future uh, because the, I'm not giving in that situation. And I, I really can't justify it. I can't justify being so worried that in the moment God won't make provision. But like Ben said, I mean, you know, you can be smart and, uh, there's just a balance and you'll, and you know, when you get compulsive about prepping, because for instance, our friend Daniel's very compulsive about prepping. That's why he has a ton of stuff that he has to give to us because it's, and honestly, it's going to go bad. You know, I mean, a lot of it's canned stuff that he's been doing it for so long that we're going to have to start using it uh, before. Now, I don't know how long canned goods can conceivably last, but, um, um, you know, I, I just, that just shows me the futility of it. Storing up all this food that you never touch, but it will go bad uh, be, but you're going to, you know, you're just going to keep holding on to it, just counting on the, the end to come. And um, so I think that's a little bit unhealthy, but uh, uh, I'm not sure how I answered the question. So should, should the question was, should I had to go outside away from my phone because my little ones cry. Um, should Chris, Christians should prep, prepare for the future? Is that how it was answered? So I would say um, undecided generally because i kind of went both ways <laughs> in my in my answer but uh but uh yeah i would say you know as the spirit leads you uh but the spirit not the flesh that's important hey ben yeah well you gave us a lot of good thoughts uh, good uh, things to consider when, when you were telling me that you tend to worry uh, yeah I, I I was real eager to hear uh, you know how you deal with that because you've probably heard me say that myself that yes I, I worry all the time about but I don't I don't the thing is I just dawned on me now I never realized this before I never worry about myself or right any, any outcome for me uh, I just yep. don't uh, but yep. for some reason I always worry about the people I love and, me too and, uh, I so. Uh, I, I think you expressed a very good, uh, healthy balance. Moderation, the older I've gotten, the more the concept of moderation in all things uh, it seems to be the, the, uh, the, the, the best answer. Right. And I think that um, one of the things for me, because I know I was paralyzed, right, worry for my, my family and my loved ones, literally my whole life, like my entire life that I can remember. It's been like my biggest fear. And um, once I got saved, I mean, a lot of that did subside because I had seen God work in so many miraculous ways, um, even just to get me here to that point um, that I, I, you know, uh, I, I just, I can't let that rule my life anymore. And, um, and I always find that, even, especially here's the thing, Luke, to remember, I've seen God reward me and loved ones for trusting and not worrying. So it's almost yes. like an incentive, you know, an yes. incentivization program that that should be something you should. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jen? Like, point. Like, 
Yeah, yeah. I think he does that so that it's t- t- for our benefit because he doesn't yeah. want us to live in that fear. So he will actually incentivize us, give us little prizes for moments <laughs> when we trusted him and didn't worry. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, that's, that's so awesome true. that somebody else knows what I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> All I know is that over, over many, many years, uh, when I needed something somehow out of the blue, just out of, almost exactly. out of the year, something appeared for me that I needed. Yep. So. Um, uh, all right. I wanted to interject one other thing, if I could, on that. No, yeah, uh, tell uh, just dovetailing right into what Sister Angel had said. She covered so many wonderful things in a short period of time. Uh, I remember before I understood what was being done by all of these different YouTube channels years ago with all this fear mongering. Before I understood that they had to gin up the fear mm-hmm. so they could sell all this stuff. Um, I was telling a family member on a tirade about, oh, this is happening, that was happening. And probably about maybe 10 minutes in, they just said, stop, just stop. And, and he was like, <laughs> I can't live my life in fear. I can't live my right. life worrying about this stuff. And I started exactly. thinking about it. And I said, hell, nobody can. Right. And I said, you can't live your life that way, worrying, oh, my God, you, you will literally be in the house pulling down the shades, peeking out the windows and stuff. Mm-hmm. I said, no, you're right. You can't live your life that way. And that really was a, a catalyst, I think, to helping me open my eyes to how these fake, quote, unquote, truthers operate and how they work. And usually, usually they always have some form. And I, I'm not talking about monetization concerning their channel, which there's that, too. But it's also there's they're always selling something. They always want yep. you to buy something or Making contribute merchandise to them. of you. Yes, to, they want you to contribute to them their channel. They're like, well, to keep this going. What do you mean keep it going? The YouTube channel's free. What are you talking about? Yeah. They mean support <laughs> them. Know. They mean support them so they don't have to go get a job. That's what they mean. You know, they're like, well, well, because then you won't get as many videos from me as often. That's okay. Take your time. Go ahead. Yes. Get your, get your, exactly. Your exactly. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. The channel's free, you know. So, and then they want you, or they want you to go over to Patreon. <laughs> so you have to pay for their content over there. Now, yeah. imagine me. I'm subscribed to over 800 channels. If I had to give each one of them a dollar a month, that's $800 a month. Exactly. Nobody's going to do that. So, you know, just recognize this a scam when you see it. If somebody's always begging for money, that's their goal. Yes. Yes. And also they've they've started to take their own channels down so that they can justify going behind a paywall or going somewhere where they're gonna make more money. That's happened. Owen Benjamin, for instance, he Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, he's actually not banned from YouTube. He took his own channels down and he lies about it repeatedly. And then yeah, he was also he, he charged people for 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 like a year. He the people that subscribed and paid as a member, they were getting charged. Oh yeah, and he lied and said that he lied and said that it was an anomaly from YouTube. It was an, they were no, it was because he never had his his channel was never deleted. He lied about it. And so of course they were still taking these fees from people just because he wasn't making content and he'd taken down all his videos. So, uh, and I've seen a lot of people do this. Uh, True news did this where they, they got quote unquote banned. They'll do it on purpose. Like they'll, they'll say something they know will get them deleted. Like, because but they, you know, they'd already been planning to go behind a paywall. Just watch out because people do this all the time. It's a big scam. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. And, and at night. Uh, I know they don't have any fear of God before their eyes. Those so scruples. that ought to tell you something. And then another, one other thing that they do is once they get to a certain level of subscribership, they have a crisis and mm-hmm. they need help to They're get out of that Boston. crisis. So, so if you imagine oh, if they gosh. have 25,000 or 50,000 subscribers and just 10% of those people send them 20 bucks, they don't have to work the rest of the year. So this yep. is one of the things yep. that they, they do. So y'all just be hip. Now, I'm not saying be led by God. Pray about it for you give somebody your money because some of these people are absolute scam artists. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, well, we don't have time for any more questions, but uh, we do have a few minutes to get uh, our closing remarks in here. So let me ask everybody in the uh, the chat room if you have any closing remarks uh, or questions here. Put it in all caps here uh, as we're finishing up, and we'll we'll see if we can address it. But let's go ahead and see. 
Uh, who would like to go first? Give me your, your summary. I'll go. Just uh, won't, won't take very long. I, I love tonight's uh, broadcast and uh, the great questions. Uh, as usual, I mean, it shouldn't be any surprise, but it always uh, sparks a lot of uh, good dialogue between everyone on the panel. And um, I'll just keep it short and sweet. I, I enjoyed it. I look forward to next week as usual. Sorry I missed last week. Uh, Jen and I both uh, took a little break. Um, but I'm glad that uh, everyone was able to show up tonight. And uh, I hope everyone has a good week and uh, excellent weekend in the chat. Thanks for being here as usual. Thanks. Okay, amen. Thank you, brother. Uh, all right, and since you mentioned her name, Jen, would you like to go next? Yeah, I'm falling asleep. <laughs> yeah, I, she, when, I when she starts, earlier, I'm like wow, <laughs> when she starts yawning like that, it's it, it it's coming soon. Oh no, could y'all hear me yawning? <laughs> just once, Sorry. I heard it. Oh, okay. it's just me. It's just me. trying to be really quiet. Sorry, it was quiet. It was a quiet, cute little yawn. That's what it is. Uh, Oh, yeah, yours sounds like Sasquatch. <laughs> yeah, they do. I, I'm a prolific yawner for sure. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, it has been a, another amazing night hanging out with you guys and having fellowship and talking about things. Some things I didn't know a whole lot about, and I learned some things, which I love to do. I love to learn. Um, and uh, some things I knew a little bit more about and just like being able to share my point of view and even have my point of view changed a little bit and challenged. So that's always nice. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what fellowship's all about. And I just really appreciate you guys and I appreciate the chat and um, God bless you guys. Have a good night's sleep, everyone. All right. Thank you, sister. Thank you for the blessing. And um, I think as um, with more and more experience uh, uh, on this panel that you'll realize that um, there's going to always be some topics where, uh, Ooh, that's not my area of expertise. Or, or, <laughs> or, um, this, this one is right up my alley. This is my wheelhouse. So cool. uh, you're, you're not alone. We all have our uh, areas where we're strong and others where we're, uh, we don't know a whole lot about it. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Brother Luke. That yeah. makes you feel better. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Sister uh, Lisa, will you give us your summary? And, and uh, what's on the agenda for tomorrow night? Okay, my summary was this was a wonderful time. Enjoyed the topics we discussed tonight. And even though Brother Cripps does indeed sound like Sasquatch when he yawns, mm -hmm. I, I'll just have <laughs> I'll have Brother D. Doss address that tomorrow night. We can find out something's going on with you, Brother Chris. <laughs> I'll, literally, I'll literally play the clip that it sounds like Whoa. the beginning of Sasquatch Chronicles. <laughs> Uh, oh that's awesome. hysterical okay so brother d Doss is going to be my guest for tomorrow night he's agreed to join us i'm not sure for how long but he is going to join us tomorrow night so we may be talking about uh all things uh bigfoot or he could uh want to join in on what our discussion is going to be tomorrow which is going to be um probably a little bit of flat earth but mostly um talking about the ocean at least for my topic tomorrow or what we've been told is the ocean and the sea, and I want to see some things that uh, maybe we haven't seen in the scripture concerning the seas that they've tricked us about. And just uh, some ideas I'm going to throw out there for everybody's cool. consideration. So I think it should be a really fun topic tomorrow. And for those of you who can't manage to stay up from 8 p.m. Pacific <laughs> until uh, roughly uh, midnight when we finish, uh, don't worry about it. I always allow replay and even the chat so um, it, you can have the same experience if you have to watch it later on Sunday morning. Uh, and then uh, let's see, in regard uh, to, uh, oh shoot, I lost my train of thought real quick. Well, tonight's broadcast here was wonderful. I enjoyed the conversation that we had. I always love talking about Flat Earth. I imagine if we did talk about it, on my broadcast, we probably talk about it for the whole four hours because it's just uh, very interesting to talk about. And uh, I'm going to eventually bring that up one evening where we just talk about how we discovered that it was false and let everybody go on talking about how they discovered it was false and how they come, came to the, uh, the revelation of that. So we may do that the following week, but tomorrow night nice. we're going to talk about all things that concern uh, the sea, at least from my topic and then other people's topic. Brother Cripps has promised that he's going to have a movie for us tomorrow to consider. So we're going to hold his feet to the fire on that. Yep. <laughs> and I hope that everybody will join us. It's 8 p.m. Pacific, uh, 
uh, let's see, that's 11 p.m. Eastern and uh, 10 p.m. Central on my channel for the Most High Jesus Late Night with Lisa and Friends. And I hope to see you all there. God bless you all. And have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Amen. Thank you. Amen. All right. Sister Angel. Sorry. Okay. So, yeah, actually, uh, I talked to D last night because, um, well, he was doing a broadcast on a show. And um, anyway, a, a long story, but I did talk to him on the phone. And um, he does plan to, to be on Saturday. And he said last night, Lisa, on his show that the conversation we had on uh, on the Saturday before last was the best conversation he's ever had on air. So I have a feeling he'll be sticking around for quite a long wow, time. That's yeah, awesome. he, yeah, and he's just an incredible brother. Um, I, I hope that uh, I hope everybody tunes in because because we really had a great conversation, and I think everybody here would love him. I'd even love to see if one day he might come on. Uh, like as just like a guest on the Friday fellowship, maybe one of these days, maybe if we have a, uh, somebody who's missing, because I think everybody would just love him. He's, he's, he's the greatest. So, um, but yes, I'm very much looking forward to that tomorrow. I really liked our discussion tonight. I thought we had just a great uh, uh, array of questions that, uh, and, you know, turned into natural discussion, which I think, you know, uh, that, that, that people honestly prefer to listen to, even if you don't like the topic. I mean, when you're having something where everybody's interested and has input, that's probably a little bit more interesting to listen to than just going through the questions where the conversation never really takes off. So I don't, you know, I hope that I hope the chat uh, is understanding about that. But um, uh, I love you guys. It was great to have a have a full house again tonight. And um, uh, yeah, I'm really I'm really excited uh, about tomorrow night. I think it's going to be a really great topic. And you know, uh, I don't want to. Uh, take up too much time with me trying to present a whole different topic but uh, what Ben said about the uh, the weather channel thing I might be able to touch on briefly uh, tomorrow night uh, but I'd really like to to focus on some of the stuff that Lisa uh, has planned already I think that's going to take up a lot of time as it is so hope you guys will join us and uh, I love you all and I uh, you know can't wait to, to see you again next Friday and hopefully you'll be around uh, tomorrow night at least for some of it hmm. All right. Thank you, sister. And I was very uh, also want to thank you for showing us uh, your daughter. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I so, wanted to. I knew Lisa wanted to see. <laughs> a special treat for all of us tonight to see her. Oh, thank right. you. Uh, all right, uh, Ben. Uh, yes, I had a lot of fun, as the title uh, says. Um, a couple questions I, I think that uh, I, you guys didn't find so much fun. Uh, they were mine, the, the ones about the angel and stirring the waters and the Nimrod. Um, so I'll, I apologize about that. But uh, those are the kind of questions I, I enjoy. But I also like the Flat Earth one, too. I, in fact, the Dinosaur one and the Flat Earth one, I was surprised. I thought we would uh, get past those really quick, but those were actually the longest. Um, but I enjoyed them. And, again, if you have any que if you don't like the questions, uh, there's there's a solution to that. Um, submit uh, them, please. And Heather, I want to thank Heather. She said a, another batch of good ones. So uh, we'll probably tear into those next week. Um, and I will look, I look forward to, uh, I'm also glad, I'm very happy to have everyone back again. It was great to have the, the full panel. Um, and I look forward to the show next, our program next week on Lisa's. So I'll see you there. Ben, nobody disliked those questions. No. You're you're ridiculous. No, we just didn't have to have we hadn't really thought about them, so we don't have a whole lot to, to say because we're waiting to hear from you because we know you have some clever answer. That's what that's at least in my case, that's what it is. <laughs> Brother Cripps, Brother Cripps, yeah. tackle Ben. We got to take him out behind the woodshed again. Yeah. And, and and spank spank him for being self deprecating <laughs> again. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Oh no, Ben! Ben, are you oh, listening? Yeah. Oh, yes, no, I never did that again. This is, oh, no. ben, are, are you paying attention? <laughs> I'm very, very close attention. <laughs> okay, all right, uh, all right. I just want to thank everybody in the congregation, uh, in the chat room, uh, all the viewing audience. Uh, thank you for being with us again. I hope we lived up to the title of uh, Fun Fellowship Friday. So, uh, we have fun. It's a great fellowship because we share this faith in Jesus and uh, we we think hey what's more fun than believers getting together and talking about Jesus and the Bible that's our our idea of fun 
<laughs> much of the world wouldn't think it's fun, but we do. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody here on the panel, uh, it was great to have everybody here tonight. Uh, it's it's never feels right if someone's missing. So I'm thankful for that. Um, so, um, all right. So don't forget to join Lisa for her program tomorrow night. And then Sunday, we got our Sunday church service. That's 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, the Sunday church service for Church of the Eternally Secure on the same channel. Thank you, everybody. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior, God, Jesus.